Jared, hold me up a slug, man. Hold you up a slug. Hold me up a slug. I'm coming in for a 454. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. Now you're showing off. <laughs> hey, Michael, can you put your fingers in my ears while I hold this camera? <laughs> So we go to turn the thermostat down and it will only go down to 74 degrees. It's locked. There's a pin code on it. Who in their right mind sleeps at 74 <laughs> degrees? <laughs> oh. uh, Do you have to hit all different ones or can you go back and forth and just... Nope, you're going to take five shots off one, then you got to move to a different one of your choice. So all the goodies that you've talked about, the Red Wolf has, mm -hmm. this has those and so much more. Okay. Um, one of the big benefits this has is the chronograph. So this chronograph reads the speed, of course, of the pellet and then loops back. To what the chronograph? System. I don't see a chronograph. Well, <laughs> underneath this sleeve here, this shroud, which uh -huh. is carbon fiber, real carbon fiber, yeah. we, it houses this chronograph right in front of the barrel. Okay, so the chronograph is feeding right data here. to the computer. Back to the computer. And it's doing what with that? It's making micro adjustments to keep the speed super tight. Wow. Is you been here before? How's it going? Yesterday. <laughs> no, you've been to EBR before. No, the first time. Good to have you. Glad you're here. Yes. Yes. In first place with a 222 3X, a $5,000 cash prize, an Accutac bipod, and a $32,000 Mahindra Rockstar, Tomcat Tommy! Does it fit? <laughs> oh yeah, this gun here's got probably somewhere in the 12, 15,000 rounds through it. Okay, and so that they've got context, what are you hunting with this? I've hunted everything with it from jackrabbits, uh, genic cats in Africa, all the way up to elk here in North America, um, kudu, eland, eland, uh, Cape eland in Africa, 1,500 pound eland. Yeah, bucks come at you pretty quick. Yeah, they do. And they're black. Are they blind? You're gonna throw food, it's gonna wind up in the run of the house. Alright, go throw the food. Throw the food. Oh, it's going, it's going for it. It's going for it. It's going for it. Is it a shrimp? So let's say 1 in 37 to 1 in 40. Uh, they, from my experience, uh, they can shoot phenomenal with calm conditions up to 920, 930. You get out here in the wind, and I hear it all the time, my pellets are spiraling. Uh -huh. And I kind of giggle and go, uh -huh. you're, you're over, you're probably over 910 yeah. uh, or 900. Mm -hmm. the, the, the stable place that I've seen a lot of, and I, I shoot with a, a lot of great, great shooters, uh, it's probably somewhere between Underneath that in here, watch watch your leg. Most people find a better sight picture to the left a little bit.
you're just moving the tuner up and down the barrel to, to play with your tune. And I, I goofed around with it a little bit and I, say, I saw a noticeable difference. All of a sudden I had a nice group where at 50 yards they were all one ragged hole. If you just shoot your neighbor's target, please raise your hand. We will work with you. You will not automatically be disqualified, but if you don't tell us, you will. I don't know how much longer I can hold this position. <laughs> <laughs> AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Seven hundred is to bolt on a hundred and fifty. Press this. I feel like I could do a one-handed, and I could still. Uh, as always, Nico, operations manager for Hot Sun. Long already. I've done a full tuning guide on this on my eighty ten. Granted, we're talking a twenty-five yard cut. It's going to be, instead of shooting at 2.30 in the afternoon, you're shooting now at, on Saturday at 4 o'clock. Oh, okay. What's, uh, what bench did I draw on the 100? You have it. Oh, okay. We haven't got there because we're fixing the other one first. <laughs> Big board, field target, NRL, you're going to all, right? Yeah, but I didn't know what his FT time is, so we can do his NRL Field target time, 1.54. So okay, let's do a 10 a.m. Oh, that's awesome. That's tomorrow. We can do a pre-order for you and get them taken care of as soon, and get you one as soon as they come in. I'll, I won't charge anything until we have them. You want to do that? This is Jacob of Arizona. I'm returning a phone call. 119 plus shipping of uh, 13 bucks. Not bad. It's a turbo diesel. I'll race you when I win it. It's nice. Don't think that for five shots, so we're going to lace it and say exactly what's the last name? Richardson. Richardson. Yeah. Gotcha. That's David or William? I got two of them. <laughs> William. Well, my middle name's David, so I think I put it under William now. How about Monster uh, 9? Just well, you got, well, there's two people. I got a David and a William. Yeah, yeah. Monster yeah. 9. Are, are there two of you? There's only one of me. Well, you signed up twice. Did I sign up twice? Hopefully, you didn't pay twice. Because we assumed that was a father and son. <laughs> or something. Okay. Hopefully, oh, wait a minute. Are you signed up for two? Yes. Let me see if you paid us twice.
shooting the pigeon? Um, shooting the AOA? Pigeon first. Oh, it is? Let's just switch it. So you should shoot the AOA a second time, and I'll count that, and then we'll go to the pigeon, okay? Oh, okay. Rabbit, 26 yards. Finishing though, so you should be good. Hold that. So I must we'll just wing it right up there. My best bet. And uh, looking at elk over there, about 69 yards right of the cactus. Bear at 42. Boar way out at 79. Weasel in close at 39. It didn't fall over. And that one I missed. Got that little frog. I can't get the 84 yard, whatever that, that thing is. Oh, darn. All right. Well, at least I got her once. <laughs> you like the blue one? <laughs> Does the blue one make you feel happy inside? Fifty-five yards. Very nice cactus right there. Yep. Extreme. Extreme, that's right. <laughs> uh, okay guys, on my right I have Derek Wall. Yes sir. <laughs> on my left I have Mike Bricker. The reason why I wanted to get you guys in front of them is because following these guys around the last, let's call it three or four years because we had a, a weird funky last year's last year mm -hmm. these guys have always kind of had a commanding presence on the circuit Derek you're two years in a fire uh, two years in a row if I remember a finalist in, out speed. Of, in speed out mm -hmm. at Armac right. and then Mike 
Uh, geez, you were uh, uh, in sportsman's class at EBR last year. You took first place, I think, in 100 yard and, and speed. And speed, yep. Yep, and then the year before that. No, and then in our oh, no, last, the last, last RMAC, year, RMAC, I made, your, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I made uh, the final in 100. I ended up finishing 10th out of 20, which I won a whole $100. And then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, I also made the final in speed. Uh, in our Mac in Pro. In fact, we both did with these guns right here. Yeah, and, and, and that's another reason I wanted to get you guys in front of them is I noticed them shooting the new Day State Delta Wolf, but also Derek, I noticed you shooting an Airgun Technologies Uruguay. Right. In yes. that precision, ri uh, precision rifle you know, series out that's there. That's right. As well. I, shot, I shot slugs 25. Mm -hmm. um, it did real well. And yeah, it's a great platform for slugs and the speed type competitions. Awesome. We're going to get very in depth on these two guns, guys, to teach you as much as we possibly can. Yeah. But before we get into that, I just want to touch a little bit about uh, a little bit more on Derek and Mike. Derek, can you give us a little bit about your background with uh, air gun technologies? Well, I love Airgun Technologies uh, offerings. They, they've got great platforms. I love the bull pups, which is what they really uh, shine at. Mm -hmm. um, so I learned the platforms real well, and they needed a U.S. Uh, a representative for their warranty center. Mm -hmm. So we, we touched base with each other, and we came up with a plan. So uh, as of now, I am the U.S. Warranty Center for Airgun Technology. And if, and if back home they don't know who AGT is, where are they from? They're from the Czech Republic. And what guns do they manu or do they sell, sell and manufacture? They do the yes. Vulcan, they do the Uragons, and one of their new offerings is the Vixen. And if you guys don't know, these are amazing rifles. Hell yeah. Super good quality, super great shooting. I'm yeah. sure you see tons of them through your warranty center. I, I see a very few, to be honest with you. They don't very need robust. much work. I think in, in a year now, I've, yeah. I've warrantied two. I see a lot more just tuning and setup uh, work, which I really enjoy as well. Amazing. Thank you. And um, Mike, do you want to talk a little bit about your background? Because this, um, this, these colors, this black and orange, and, yeah. this, and this team center cut I've been yeah. seeing for years, what's that all about? Well, it started after, uh, after EBR 2019. And what happened was, um, after I won the Sportsman Class Speed Silo and the Sportsman Class 100 Yard, Robert Buchanan, who who is the head cheese at uh, Air Guns of Arizona, mm -hmm. called me up and he said, Day State wants you to be on the Wolf Pack. Do you want to be on the Wolf Pack? We'll give you a, a free gun and we'll give you the uniforms and all that stuff. And I said, Factory I, I, sponsorship. I really, deal. really appreciate yeah. that, but I want to be able to shoot whatever. Not that I don't like them, because you can see I do shoot Day States, right. but I also shoot other guns. And I wanted to be able to shoot whatever gun I wanted. So just off the cuff, on the phone, I said, Robert, how about since AOA doesn't have a team, I mean, you have a Wolfpack, but that's a Day State sponsored team. How about if AOA sponsors a team and we'll call it Team Center Cut? Oh, my, give you a little more flexibility. Yeah, give more flexibility. So it's my logo on Airgun Nation Center Cut, and it goes way back to when I used to play a lot of competitive golf, but that's neither here nor there. But uh, so I used Center Cut for that. And then uh, I, I knew Derek from RMAC. And I said, hey, how about if we get a team together? So it started out just the two of us, and then Bill Miller in Texas, and then some other guys. So now we have, I think, nine nine members of Team Center Cut. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, we all wear the, the shirts like this. And uh, so we're sponsored. Um, and, uh, you know, AOA does a great job. You know, let's, let's just talk about that. I know I, I, I keep putting it off, but there's so many neat things to cover, and I promise we're going to dive deep into these gu guns, guys. But for somebody new at home that wants to get into this, uh -huh. you know, it's just so interesting how you approached someone like AOA. Right. And we're like, hey, I want to do this and compete at all the events. Right. You know, can you support me? Yes. And can you have flexibility in doing so? And the answer was just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look. Got AOA here, and we go to all the big events. And the guys that join the team, my only requirement was that you shoot in RMAC and EBR. And then we just started this team event we had in July that a lot of people don't know about that we're kind of be, going to be doing probably every year. So I want the guys to come to 
all the three major events because that's where AOA makes their money. They see us wearing the hats and shirts. Mm -hmm. They see the logo everywhere. And then also when we shoot in our local tournaments, like when Derek shoots in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, or I shoot uh, over in Arizona, we shoot a monthly extreme field target. Mm -hmm. The guys on the team wear the colors. So yeah. they're seen for the smaller tournaments also. So, so takeaway is if you guys feel like you want to get into this, don't be afraid to approach yep. a manufacturer. If you have a group of guys and gals, don't be afraid to approach a distributor or retailer and say, hey, we want to represent you. Can we work together? And then as you can see, they'll put you out on the circuit and give you that factory support. Just like yeah. you're driving a race car or, yep. or running a bass boat, and it's the exact same thing. And the, the, only, the only requirement, it wasn't that you be a crack shot or anything like that. I mean, Derek's a really good shot. Some of us on the team are pretty good shots. Good shot. But there are others that aren't. But it was really just to represent and to be a good product, a good rep for AOA. That's what we're doing. Awesome. If we win or not, winning's great. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but we're here and we're having fun. You're That's represent. what we're here for. Having fun, representing the brand, right. representing, representing the, the, brand. Exactly. the company. Yep. Super cool. That's a good nugget. That's a good takeaway. Yeah. All right, so speaking of that, let's get into these Delta Wolves. Right. So maybe lay the foundation with the, the Day State Red Wolf, which okay. they've some of them have probably seen me right. review it already. But if they haven't, that's a full electronic air gun. Map yes. compensating technology yep. to keep your shot, you know, does it all internally regulated, all with electronics, keeps mm -hmm. your shot curve nice and flat got a lot of controllability over power and velocity and shot count and efficiency efficiency with that uh, what do they call it the GCU gun control yeah, unit GCU, the new one's the GCU 2.0 2.0 much, much more po powerful, powerful. Than the one yep the cycling's electronic the trigger's electronic and these guns have been out here competing for years now and and have been in the money i remember michael went the owner oh. of the air gun nation forum a couple of years back came out here with a they state Red Wolf, and he he won the the he one gun challenge. He smoked the field. I know. He smoked the field. Not only yeah. one, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, he yeah, shot a perfect. perfect score on field target. He won the speed silo and the one gun challenge. So he won three different things. Amazing. So yeah. if you guys are in the market and you're not afraid of the tech, watch my video. It's waterproof. The batteries last forever. Yeah. They've proven very very reliable. This state electronics has actually been out for like 15 years. Oh yeah. Crazy. It's been out a long time. Yeah. You had yeah. the older the older. Uh, the older guns that had similar to what this gun has. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's the foundation. Who wants to start us off um, and just take us through their Delta Wolf? Well, I, can, I can start off. Yeah, uh, okay. So brand new. Let's kind of give yeah give these the are stage these a are brand bit. new. This is a thirty. We've had them about six months, less than six months. Mm -hmm. This is a thirty cal, and this is a twenty five cal, and we've shot these at RMAC, and we're gonna. Um, I'm gonna shoot this at Speed Silo here. Uh, and I'm not sure if Derek's going to shoot it or not because he is shooting a cricket. Well, it's tactical. 30 caliber. It's 30, oh, it's 32, so, so you can't shoot, can't shoot this. Right. Side, okay. But regardless, it's so all the goodies that you've talked about the Red Wolf has. Mm -hmm. This has those and so much more. Okay. Um, one of the big benefits this has is the chronograph. So this chronograph reads the speed, of course, of the pellet and then loops back. To what the chronograph? System. I don't see a chronograph. Well, <laughs> underneath this sleeve here, this shroud, which uh -huh. is carbon fiber, real carbon fiber, where it houses this chronograph right in front of the barrel. Okay, so the chronograph is feeding right data here. to the computer. Back to the computer. And it's doing what with that? It's making micro adjustments to keep the speed super tight. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any controllability over that as the, like, I know with the Red Wolf, I did a whole tuning guide on that. Right. Are these tunable like, like they're, that? They're, t they're tunable like that and, and a lot easier in that you don't have to have another unit to tune. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's all built in mm -hmm. and you also have a touch screen. Aha, so that's a big difference between yeah. a Red Wolf and a Delta Wolf. Right. On board tuning. Right. With an LCD display. Exactly. instead of having the plug-in handheld unit exactly so it's all incorporated exactly wow so okay. you you have those extra benefits you've also got what the what the red wolf doesn't have mm -hmm. is a a regulator so it's using just the electronics which it does very well at regulate yeah the red wolf's using like a solenoid right of some sort the red to, wolf to, has a yeah it's based on electricity Right, it's based on how hard that the solenoid uh, hits, and that's the voltage. And for and how, long. how long. The pulse width. Right, and that's the pulse width. I exactly. remember tuning yep. those two things. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So you have those goodies, but now you've got 
a control of a HUMA regulator. So, so the, yeah, so right the Delta Wolves come with HUMAs? Yeah, yep. there's an ah, adjustable HUMA regulator, cool. which is externally adjustable. I'll be taking photographs yeah. of all this yeah. when we're done and putting it all up on the pit <laughs> screen for these yeah. guys to see while we're right. talking. So, yeah. But, uh, okay, so go ahead, sorry. So, we've got the HUMA regulator doing its job, mm -hmm. so it makes the electronics relax a bit more and, and they're able to do their job even better. Mm. Okay. Yeah, think about it. Think about the Red Wolf. You fill it to 250 bar and you shoot it down to like the HP 22, around 175, 180 bar. Mm -hmm. And you get 60, 65 shots. Well, that gun control unit has to change the settings of the solenoid from 250 all the way down to 175. As it goes. As it goes. So it's mm -hmm. changing. As the pressure goes down, it changes the settings in the gun mm -hmm. with an algorithm. So the regula or the, a regulator, right. a mechanical regulator, in a sense, is simplifying that. Right. It's simplifying that it. So process. the gun just has to think about one pressure. If you have that set, like his is 155 bar or something. Yeah. Mine's about 130. Mm -hmm. But the gun says, oh, I have to compensate for 130 and it just stays there. Mm -hmm. So you get a really good extreme spread. You get a really consistent, even more consistent than the Red Wolf. Okay, so something I wanted to ask you was, so I remember with the Red Wolf, it had it had three onboard power settings that I was able to program, mm -hmm. a low, medium, or high. Right. I could make that low, medium, or high, whatever I wanted. Yep. Eco-tune, pro-tune, power-tune yep. is kind of how I had it in my head if I remember. So does do the Delta Wolves, Wolves, do the Delta Wolves, Wolves, wolves <laughs> do they do similar? Uh, not really. The Delta Wolves, um, they're the map compensated just like the Red Wolf. And you know, when you tune the Red Wolf, let's say for high power, let's say you set it for medium, right. and you were sending it to shoot the Monster RDs at 970, which is a good speed for the Red Wolf. Okay, yeah. And then within that medium setting, you had three settings, right? So you had the high, the medium, and the low, uh -huh. and that basically set up a curve or an algorithm so that when you shot the gun and the pressure decreased, it changed the gun settings um, to keep the speed about the same. But it was just based on experience and based on tuning the gun and trying it. This, when this goes in there and you set this at, say he, say he has his gun set, or let's say this one, mm -hmm. I'm shooting the... Uh, heavy 25 caliber pellets mm -hmm. at 885 feet per second. Okay. So I have my regulator at 130 bar, and I have the settings so that this does similar to what the Red Wolf does, the high, medium, or low, mm -hmm. except it's just a sliding scale the whole way. But There's so no high, medium, or low. Okay. If, I let, if I let the pressure get up to 170 or down to 120. Mm -hmm. As long as there's enough pressure in there to make that pellet go the speed you want it, mm -hmm. the gun will compensate for it by itself. You don't have to go set all that stuff in there like you uh, do with the red. Wolf. So you go just ahead. dial in your speed. Yeah. You so, dial in your speed with a touchscreen LCD. Okay. And it, the gun is going to get. So it's like so it's like driving a car. You just you just hold the accelerator on 60 miles an hour, and the car will just make it work. Right. It'll just make it work. Or kind of like cruise control. Like cruise, cruise control. Uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, so you're you're feeding information into the into the into the LCD, we'll call it. It has a gun control unit. Okay. Uh, how do you how do you control that? Like, is it a touch pad? Is, are you are you are you throwing levers and? Yeah, can you turn it around? Touch so you can see it. Yeah, yeah you can show them. I mean, yeah. I'll take close up pictures yeah. too, so they can see. There you go. So so that's the LCD. Yep. So right. how do you talk to it? How do you program? Well, you basically you're, you're going to unlock it. You put the gun on safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, open the bolt. Mm -hmm. yep. And you hold the trigger. Hold the trigger until yep. your your lock will go yep. out. Okay. And then from there, now it's a touch screen. So I can now choose factory mode uh -huh. or advanced mode. Uh -huh. I can choose different calibers. I can choose my speed, turn the crony on and off. Uh -huh. I got night mode uh, to save on battery power. You can put it on night mode so the screen's not illuminated as bright. All right, let me paint a picture real quick. So this is a what caliber? 30 caliber. So a 30 caliber. So I pick, let's call it a 34 grain pellet. I put that in there. I tell the computer that I want it to run at 880 feet per second by putting that in and it just does it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. What it does is it, it, it senses the speed and, it, and, and you know when the Red Wolf you just sense basically pressure. Mm -hmm. You sense bottle pressure and that fed the into the algorithm to give you what the gun should shoot at. What mm -hmm. the what the dwell, like you talked about, mm -hmm. the dwell and the and the how the hard it hits. And the voltage right. 
this takes adds this still has both of those yeah but it adds the speed it's an as another sensor. input right it's another sensor and it feeds that speed back into that algorithm also so it simplifies it and it just you can just tell the gun what you want it to yep. do instead of turning a screwdriver yep you know controlling a hammer spring or whatever right you're just dialing that yes. into the screen yep. so not only that it's multi-caliber yeah so you pull one one set screw it enables you to pull your barrel, uh -huh. and then you can change your probe really easily. And uh, you know, you change your magazine out, yeah. and you're what, ready for another caliber. What are the calibers that that are available? Currently, 177, 22, 25, and 30. Okay. What barrels are these guns running? What do they come with? Do you know? Lothar Walther. Yeah. Is Lothar it the Walther? match this, of the polygon? This is a Lothar Walther poly barrel, 600 millimeter. Poly, poly, polygon. And I think the 30 cal is the same. It's a polygonal profile bar yeah. barrel with 600 millimeter yeah. as well. Okay. I noticed you have a 580 cc bottle and a 480 over here. Yep. Is that factory? No. This is. I put this on there. Okay. Uh, this came off another gun when I got this gun, but yeah, the 580 bottle. And this gun's efficient enough that I, if I if I didn't have this laying in my tool bin, mm -hmm. I would have stuck with the same model. But since I had it, hey, what the hell, I'll add, I'll add 100 cc's and put this on there. Yeah, sure, right. especially out here for like right. bench rests and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Can you guys share some specifics? Because it's always important to these guys. They're always trying to figure out how to make a pellet or a slug fly straight. Can you share your specifics as far as what pellet, what speed, and you know, you know that kind of that kind of thing. Sure. Uh, so, as far as pellets goes, um, uh, I mean your industry standard pretty much. Uh, you guys that are in the know want to start out around 880. Uh, 880 is a really good speed for most calibers and most weights. From there, you just need to experiment. Experiment with different pellets, just like you do. Mm -hmm. You have a stack of pellets and you filter them down until you have five that are shining real, mm -hmm. real well. That's that's a good uh, you know a good technique to, to move forward with finding your pellet that you want to shoot. Does this let you in five foot per second increments, one foot per second increments? Like how much? How much? Yeah, one foot. Per oh second wow! Mm -hmm. So with a lot of detail. Oh, yeah. And you just move that up and down yeah. until that pellet starts flying straight, and it's easy. You don't have to do anything else. Yeah, you right. just want to get your groups tightened up. I, I like to start out at 25, 30 yards, and then move out from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the 25. I had this when I when I shot this uh, when I'm shooting it at 100 yards. If I'm shooting it at 100 yards, mm -hmm. I started out like Derek said, and you said on almost all your videos, 880, 885, somewhere between there and 890. It's usually where they want to be. Pretty much good, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the 25 caliber Mark One heavies shoot really good out of this, that speed, but if you lower it down to about 860, it becomes magic. So this one, if I'm shooting 100 yards, I'll shoot this at 860, 855 to 860. And even other people look, well, that's really mild, isn't it? Yeah, look at this group. I shot at 20, 20 uh, pellets at 50 yards. Yeah. Right? And so it does that. Well, if I'm shooting it like I'm going to be doing here, I'm shooting this in speed silo. I bumped it up to 890, 900 because I want the pellet to get there faster. Mm -hmm. And these guns are so fast. Like we did good at speed silo at RMAC because if you're cocking this gun, it's just, if yeah. there's nothing there, there's no, there's resistance, no resistance at all. Well, yeah, let's talk about that. So but I guess before we get into that, I wanted to just oh, kind of drive home a point that you just made. Right. So our Mac, not this most recent one, but the one pre all of the craziness, uh -huh. I remember when FX came in and Johan Axelson won it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and he was shooting a, a, like a, I can't remember if it was a 25 or 30 cal at like 850, 860. Yeah. Yep. And so, you know, everyone, all we're always wanting speed, speed, power, power, because it helps in the wind, it helps keep the trajectory flat right, right. and all these things. So the fine tuning comes in, but come, is always there between, you know, getting that pellet to where it's flying stable where at those lower velocities, but then fast enough to be able to cheat the wind, right, right. Where, and you don't have so much drop as well. That's the that those are the balance balance points. And, and, and sometimes you just stumble on it. Well, for sure. Like I was shooting. A lot of it's luck for sure. It was luck, and I'm shooting at 880, 885, 890, mm -hmm. and I was shooting so much I was laying prone where I normally shoot, and I didn't realize the pressure had got down to about 110 bar, mm -hmm. and I look and it's shooting about 850, 855, and every one of them are going into the same hole. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. like, huh, oh, yeah. there must be something here. So that, sometimes sure. you just stumble into it. Yep. Um, so watching yeah, it watching you a few weeks back at RMAC, yeah. 
you were like lightning fast in, in the speed, and I and I know you were just about to talk about it, but yeah. before I wanted to drive home that point, but the cocking lever on a Delta Wolf and a Red Wolf, yes. you're not compressing a hammer spring, so. You know, we've got some people around us, so do you maybe want to kind of do an up and over with muzzle yeah. in a safe direction? Well, when you're show when, you're, how, when how, you're shooting the Delta Wolf or a Red Wolf, it's almost the same. Yeah, show them. The Give only, an example. The only... Um, Come on in here a little bit, Mike. I'm going to square okay. up a little bit. There you go. The only resistance is there's a magnet here that holds this shut. Let's do this so they can see. There you okay. go. There's a magnet up here that holds this shut, and there's a magnet in the back right here mm -hmm. that holds it open. Other than that... That's your cocking cycle. There's my little that. finger. Uh -huh. And so when you shoot this fast, the easiest way to do it is just to shoot it and hold the handle. This is a, an aftermarket handle. The one okay. that comes with it is a little stubbier. Mm -hmm. He has a longer one on too. Mm -hmm. But if you just take the gun like this mm -hmm. and you shoot it and then you pull the trigger with your middle finger, mm -hmm. Oh wow! I can, I can, as fast as I can pull that trigger, yeah. as fast as I can move this, I can shoot. Who is making that? Who makes the aftermarket uh, handle? Um, Daystate. This comes. I think Daystate makes it. I'm not sure, but I. That's, we, yeah, I got it from yeah, AOA. Yeah, AOA sent it to us. It's like a performance to hop up, right? Yeah. Cool. In fact, the same. The, the new Deltas may be coming with that already. I think they probably will. They're 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 gradually making improvements as they as they come on. Like mm -hmm. this is a. If you look at this one, this one has a really old number. This is one of the first ones that came in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Do you guys, you know, there's a lot of stuff I'm seeing on this gun that I think we tend to take for granted because we're around them all the time. Right. But I'm seeing like bag riders, I'm seeing height adjusters, I'm seeing a couple of different grips, yep. I'm seeing pick rails on the side, I'm seeing pick rails on the bottom. Arca uh, Swiss rail. Yeah, I mean the Arca. Do you want to take them through yeah, maybe, Derek? Kind of sure. all the all the accoutrement that comes on a on a Delta Wolf plus the badass hydro dip. Yeah, <laughs> I took pictures of that in Utah a few weeks. Yeah, back. we saw it on Instagram. Yeah, so yeah. PRS is offering some of these accessories like this bag rider that uh -huh. you see. They also offer a, a butt hook for the back um, and the Arca rail. Um, so there, a number of different companies are coming out with accessories for this platform, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, from factory though, it comes with this cheek rest, which is fully adjustable. It slides on this dovetail, so you can put this wherever you want, wherever mm -hmm. you're mechanically built. You can slide this, and, and it will facilitate those needs for you. The scope rail is also slides on this dovetail, so you can depending on the, your mechanics and the way you're built biologically, you can put this and fit it custom to, to your needs. So I, li I really like that feature as well on the Delta. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, as Mike mentioned, I did have a, 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 some custom pieces dipped here, mm -hmm. which gives it a little bling. Mm -hmm. I like that. It kind of sets it apart. Um, it's got the AR grip, so the, you know there's umpteen uh, manufacturers. So you can put on whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever you want. Okay. How's um, how's I you know they're probably wondering. Well, gee, it's got batteries. How long does that last? It lasts several thousand rounds. The battery, if you charge, like say I'm going to shoot this tournament, and I'm going to shoot this gun in every event. If I charged the battery last night, it would be good through Sunday. Um, the ba the battery lasts uh, a good long time. It doesn't last as long as the Red Wolf. The Red Wolf lasts months. Okay. Uh, this one probably lasts, if you shoot it most of the day, three or four days, mm -hmm. you're going to have to recharge the battery. Okay. Uh, and the battery, the cool part is, unlike the Red Wolf where you have to take the battery out of the handle, mm -hmm. this one here, it just plugs in a USB-C port right here. Okay. You plug it in overnight, charges the battery up, you're good to go. Okay, nice. You guys, um, I wanted to ask you too about the regulators. Okay. So can you adjust the regulator pressure then in these? Yes, they're externally adjustable. Actually. Okay, so you put that where you want, and mm -hmm. then you tell the gun what velocity you want. Right. And, it, and so, so you're experimenting with regulator pressure and the velocity as well. Exactly. Uh -huh. So what reg pressures? You mentioned it before, I think. Well, you this, one, this one I have set 25 at 100. Cal. Yeah, it's a 25 cal. It's shooting about 60 foot pounds. Okay. And the reg set at 130 bar. And the the velocity is 880, with, 885. With a with a 34 grain heavy 25 caliber. Just wanted to put mark, it. All, it likes the Mark ones better than the Mark twos. Okay. Just wanted to put all yeah. that in one space and yeah. one clip for you guys. Uh, for me, I actually have mine set at about 145 bar. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm shooting a 50.15 grain JSB, which 
a lot of 30 calibers don't like, but I have the benefit of this barrel, this Lothar Walker polygonal barrel loves them. Mm -hmm. So I'm shooting those around 860. Mm -hmm. um, it's capable of so much more, but that's the sweet spot for this particular platform that I've found. Um, so I'm getting around 82 pounds of energy. Okay. The benefits to shooting that pellet compared to the 4475 is if they're the same accuracy or better, mm -hmm. that one has a better ballistic coefficient than the 4475. So mm -hmm. when you're shooting it in the wind and swirling and stuff like that. I was going to say, what does that mean to these guys? Right. It, it, it's better uh, places like this. Like right now, there's not much wind at all. But when we shoot at 75 tomorrow and then 100 on Sunday, mm -hmm. if we make the finals, it's going to be windy. It is every year. And shooting the 50.1, Say with the 4475, it was going to drift uh, two mil. Mm -hmm. Say at, at 100, mm -hmm. the 50 might drift one and a half. So okay. it's not a huge amount, but it's enough to make a difference between a nine and an eight. Yeah, or in the money, out of the money, or a six on the podium, or a five. off the podium. Yeah, right, exactly. Absolutely. But the one thing that's really sweet here is so let's just say I wanted to go to the 44.75. Mm -hmm. It's just a touch away. You know, a touch, I have that settings already preset. built in, mm -hmm. preset. I'll just factor through my options and set it, and the gun's ready to go for wow. that speed that I've already preset. Wow. Say I want to go slugs which the gun, this gun loves the 43.8 grain mm -hmm. NSA. Um, I can have a slug setting already preset in there. I just go to that and I'm ready to shoot slugs, ready for hunting prairie dogs for the day. So when you say a slug setting, you mean in your mind, I'm noting reg pressure, I'm noting the velocity that it did well at. I dial those two factors back into the gun and I'm right back where I started. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, I, I, when I had reviewed the Red Wolf, yeah. one of the biggest takeaways for me, and I, I remember like it was yesterday, it was so profound. It was so easy to go back to a tune that I found as being right, successful. Right. Instead of like taking a day to refine that sweet spot, you know, and it yep. does, it can take half a day to, to or a day to, to really zero that in. With you guys, you're doing the work ahead of time. Right. You're finding where that reg pressure was, what velocity it wanted. And then with a couple of inputs, you're like right back there. Yeah, that's and what's you're, so you're cool exactly about this type. right back. You're like exactly. There's no right. guessing. Like, right. was it a quarter turn or an eighth turn this right, way or right. that way? Where you're messing yeah. with frequencies, you're like right. Yeah, and other guns are are as adjustable, but it just takes more effort, more time. You know, you do a couple of tins of pellets get mm -hmm. zeroed in, and and we can't find pellets these days anyway. So you don't <laughs> want to have to do that. But yeah, you just dial it. Like, I know mine probably has. 30 different settings in here that I've gone through and tried out. So if I want to, I had a 177 HP, which is a 600 millimeter 177 barrel mm -hmm, on here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have settings in here for shooting 177 10.3s, 177 Monster RDs, 177 Beasts. You know, all of it's in here. And if I would, would want to switch, if I want to switch the barrel out, uh -huh. I loosen this screw right here pull the barrel out and there's two screws. There's one on the side and there's one in the back when you just pop this it off. Comes right and it takes the pe pellet probe out, you pop the new one in, pop the new barrel, get on this, the screen, set your 177 for what pellet you want to go, mm -hmm. you're good to go. So there's something I think I, a dot that maybe I just connected because it was a little slow. <laughs> I haven't gotten a lot of sleep lately. But so you're not saving all of these settings on a notepad. I know no. the Red Wolf had low power, medium power, high power, but what you're saying is the Delta Wolf has the ability to store inside right. yes. all of those, all of that all stuff? All of those settings. Uh, and, okay. and they're working on, right now you have to do okay. it through the touch screen. Yep. The electronics in here are Bluetooth enabled. Ooh. So, so what they are going to do and working on doing mm -hmm. is having a phone app for your iPhone oh or your Android my phone. Goodness gracious. So instead of going like this yep. on this little screen, you're on your phone. You're like, oh, I want to shoot the uh, the RD monsters in 177. Shh. It's done. Wow. And it feeds it into here. Right now, you would have to. You could if you had the computer program, which we don't have. I think the guys at Daystate have it, and guys that are testers for Daystate here, like Bobby Corcoran has it. Mm -hmm. But he plugs into here, and it does all that stuff. Wow! But it'll be even easier with the with the Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. So let's all right. So let's kind of just bring it all together because we may right. have some new fo new folks at home, sure. and this is a lot for anybody to process. <laughs> so, so what all this means to you guys is you will have to do the work of finding out what regulator pressure, mm -hmm. what velocity, what pellet does well, in what conditions. Yep. But then once you find that nugget, you can program it into the gun and it's always there for you to go back to when you go in search of your next pellet, next speed, right. 
next slug, next regulator adjustment. You get that one, you right. put that one in the gun, and then anytime you learn something, you put it in there and store it, and you can quick reference right back to it as you change barrels and, and change pellets yeah, and, and slugs you, when, and weights. When you save those settings in here, you can give it a name, four, four characters. Ah. So, like, well, like, I just finished doing the 177. I just put the 25 barrel back on, but for the past couple of months, I was mm -hmm. shooting 177 because I was just testing it out. Mm -hmm. And if you look at my settings, it will say, 177A, 177B, and then when I found the ones I like, 177RD for the monster redesigns, 177B for the beasts. So I knew when I flicked through there, oh, this one's for that pellet, and that's the pellet I want to shoot. Sweet. Done. So it's up to you, it's up to the operator to save them with the name that you want. Got it. And you can make it simple too. Yeah. You own just like, say, a 25 cal. Yep. Slug one, slug two, yeah. slug three for the different slugs that you found that work well with right. the gun at X speed yes. and X reg yep. setting. Exactly. Wow, that's super cool. Okay, so so this technology does not come for free. Right. So let's make sure we disclose what price point we're playing in here. Well, I uh, I think these are now when they first started selling them. When you got your you got your uh, order in in advance and yeah. you waited. They were twenty nine ninety five. Mm -hmm. Now I think they've gone up about four hundred bucks. I think they're thirty three ninety five so at AOA. So let's just call it thirty four, thirty five hundred yep. solar system. Yes. Okay. Sound about right. Yep. Yep. All right. Let's let's wrap it up with a little bit of myth busting because that's always fun oh, okay. for everybody back home. Uh, moderators on air guns. For you guys, is it more about tuning in accuracy or getting rid of noise? For me, it's both. For me, it's both. I I do like to go places where I want to be stealthy, and so I love to run a moderator, but that absolutely cannot affect my accuracy. So, um, you know, although I love to run them, I do want to test them, different ones, and make sure I'm running the right one for my platform, yep. that it's not going to affect my accuracy. So, what's this one? This is a Donny FL. I, I did. That's uh, the big Ronin. This right? is the Ronin. Ronin. Yeah. Did you plus size it, or is it the moderator of the caliber? It's it's the moderator of the uh, caliber. This okay. is a 30 caliber Ronin. Okay. So it's done really well. Uh, I like the way it uh, it does some of the uh, scrubbing of the you know turbulence behind the pellet. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, it does can ha uh, help accuracy there. But yeah, I, I love it for both reasons. Yeah. Cool. I'm I'm the, I'm the same. I like it. I shoot a lot where I shoot out in east, about 30 miles east of San Diego. Um, there's an area where a lot of horse farms. It's called Descanso, California. And I have a couple of horse ranchers that let me set up a 100 yard range on their property. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to shoot next to horse corrals. So, and they're so they can if, be so scared. If you have a gun that's loud, it will scare the horses. Mm -hmm. And then the guy that owns the property won't let you shoot anymore. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like Derek. If the, if the moderator affects the accuracy at all, mm -hmm. I will not use it. You mean in a negative way? In a negative way, right. But have it's, you found that, that sometimes they contribute to it positively? Yes. Um, with this gun, this is a Silent Thunder Ordnance moderator. Okay. So it's an STO, Fox, FALX. It's really good. I like it. I have it on a couple of my guns. On my Red Wolf, I have the 0DB moderator. Mm -hmm. And my Red Wolf is more accurate with that 0DB moderator than without it. Weird. But no, it's a, it's a, you know, we've learned yes. it's a lot about that this harmonic about tuning and barrel frequency and what that you give the gun what yeah. it wants. Yeah. Totally. All right, next one. Did you got like cleaning? All the time, never, barrel cleaning. When do you, when do you do it? How do you know? <laughs> for me. We're going to talk uh, about the controversial stuff. Yeah, no, that's stuff cool. Uh, for, for me, if we're, if we're, you know, per, shooting precision, I like to clean my barrel every 10, you know. Uh, every 10. Every, ten. every, every ten. 10. Gotcha. Which Texas in this case, okay, okay, okay. 150. <laughs> every pan. <laughs> <laughs> in this case, it's every 150 test. pellets or so, which is really easy. You know, I've got a uh, patchworm that I can, Love the I can pull yeah. through. Um, and so it's, it's really easy to do every 10. And, um, and then I don't to have to worry. It. <laughs> yeah, as some people, if you're hunting and such, they may want to wait until they start to see accuracy degrade. Sure. Um, for me, I, I'm more uh, shoot precision, and I just like to stay ahead of the curve there. So okay, so you just wh whether it needs it or not, every every ten, exactly. <laughs> you're cleaning it. What do you what what lube are you using on your patchworms? Uh, Bellastar. Yep, me too. I, I love that. I've had great luck with that yeah. too. Okay, I I clean when it needs it. Um, 
when I was shooting the old bobcat that I shot a couple years ago here, yeah, yeah. I cleaned that once a year whether it needed or not, every 10,000 rounds or so. And, you know, the old ST barrels, really you didn't need to clean them at all, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. But ones like this and my Red Wolf, I do it about once every 10. Oh, 10. Once every, every 10. 10. So you but, guys are but, both 10 But men. I shoot the FX uh, RD Monster, so about every 350, every 10 of, so every 350, 400, I'll clean my Red Wolf or I'll clean this guy. So honestly, it sounds like you guys don't know, if, I mean, it might just do well with you just leaving it and keep shooting it. Could. Shooting it. Yeah, it could. But you're not going to risk it, you're just cleaning it every time. No, because when you think about it, you're shooting at 100 yards. One, four, or five uh, can ruin your score. Mm -hmm. You get one flyer and you're screwed. Yeah. Do you find they need seasoning after, after cleaning? They do. Uh, yeah. Usually, if I run a mag in, in 30, which is eight rounds, you're good. I'm good. Same thing. Same thing for that and my Red Wolf. I've noticed too. Sometimes you clean them. I would have to say, out of all the brands that I review, more often than not, they run great, squeaky cleaned. Yeah. And they run good until something mucks up in that barrel. Yeah. And then, but uh, some, but every once in a while you'll get one that needs a hundred pallets through it before yeah. it'll run. Right. There are barrels. It's so rare for me. There are barrels like the older uh, FX ST barrels, where you cleaned them, they wouldn't shoot two or three MOA at 50 yards until you put 50 or 60 through them. I was it took say, forever. I remember the, yeah. the, the the very first Dreamline I ever reviewed. Yeah. That thing wouldn't shoot straight until I put 150, yep. 200 yep. pallets yep. through it. But then I've had other original smooth twist yeah. barrels where you clean them, you put five through it, and it's good. Ah, yeah, yeah, I guess it depends on the barrel. Yeah, you just so don't. Both of us They're usually, not all the same. Both of us usually polish our barrels when we get the gun new. We'll oh take God. the barrel off. That's and we'll a whole other subject. Let's don't get into that. We're already like a 40-minute yeah. video. And, probably and, way, way over. and I've just started actually waxing the barrel after I polish it. Oh like Carnuba God. wax. And... Uh, with no here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Save, save, <laughs> save some save some of those uh, those racy tech tips for the and it for the next time. It works. Sandy's over there yeah. going, shh, shh, shh. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> all right, let's wrap it up okay. with um, your scopes. I see they're both Athlon. What's yep. that all about? Well, I like the Athlon. I like the whole line. Um, uh, this is a Midas uh, BTR, so this is an SFP version of the Midas TAC. Okay. Uh, I like it just because they're really not that expensive. I think this one's somewhere around $475, $500. Mm -hmm. Four and a half to 27 mm -hmm. Great reticle, really clear glass. Uh, I'd compare it, you know, if you compare it to a much more expensive scope, then it's going to be clearer. But this is clear enough to do anything that I really want. And I'm not shooting at 1,000 yards. I'm right. shooting at 100. Right. So. All what you, as my father-in-law right. from Russia would say, yeah. it's all what you need. It's all, <laughs> all what, what you, you need. need. Yep. Exactly. Right. Uh, I'm, mm -hmm. Again, I, I, I run the Athlons too. I just was, I was looking for a manufacturer that I could just go with yep. and get used to that reticle. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the Athlon was in my price range. Uh, so this is a Helos. I have uh, also a Kronos, which is their top of the line. Uh, there is a difference in quality, but um, they're all good. You know, yeah, I find throughout the range they're really good, and I'm getting used to that one reticle that I really like, mm -hmm. and so it's just, you know, familiarity yeah. for me. And, and what I found yeah. from the, I don't know about the lower ones, but from the Helos, which is this one, the next one up is the Midas. Mm -hmm. From that one on up, you can dial, and if if I dial this and I I laser range it and it says 97 yards, mm -hmm. and I turn this to 97. This gun is going to shoot in the X at 97 yards, and it's repeatable. That's just so important. Mm -hmm. Guys, I can't thank you enough. I mean, oh. you just gave like 45 minutes of your lives <laughs> playing air gun professor for these guys back uh, home, no, and no. I'm sure they We're appreciate it. Here every year. Oh, it's just so, Derek, yes, thank you. Yep. Thank you for everything you do as well. Yeah. Oh, you're very welcome, you guys. You always watch your videos and talk about yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I love learning. Your neck. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> okay. it's not at all. I love learning. That's why I love coming out here because I didn't really know much of anything right. about the Delta Wolf, and I learned tons today. I hope yeah. you guys did too, and, and we all learned how to be successful yeah. together because awesome. that's what it's all about. Appreciate Good. you guys. Okay, cool. Good luck at the event. Check it out. One of you will keep score.
Jeff will keep time. One of you will look through the binoculars and call hits for your fellow shooter. Don't miss his hits. He might be on the glass for you next time. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right, okay. Should I go get my binoculars? Have fun. So which swap, the five I got? One, two, three, four. Huh? I'll score. Six what should be six? Order? I missed it. Well, we can make sh whatever Doesn't shorter you want. We can start out this way here. What we'll do, the one that shoots first, yeah, we'll shoot last and next. We'll just roll up. Okay, so who's first, second, third? Tucker's first. Three, four, five, six. All right, who's second? You may not be able to see it right away, but you've got a, a two and a one and a half. So you got a big one and a small one on this first hanger. Okay, yeah. And then you go to the second one, which is at 63 yards. He's got a three and a two and a half. Okay. And okay. then the last one is a four inch at 83. Okay. So you guys got it? So then when you're shooting this, you're going to start off, you can pick either this one. Or here, you want to rest your rifle on that. Okay. You'll take the first five shots doing that. So you're going to do from near to far, large to small. So you're going to do the top one, bottom one, then you go to the middle set, top one, bottom one, then you go to the last one. That's, you could be almost two mils off and still be right. Okay. You can still be on target. At least, you know what I mean? As long as you got your wind called out. Okay. So. 100, 120, 164. Got to get the dopes. It's all about the dopes. Impact. Make the rifle safe. Bolt back. Thank you. Five. Brad. All right. I poked my nose in enough to where it's starting to burn. Your turn. Oh, really? <laughs> what does that smell like? You no tell, way. You tell me. <laughs> no way. Ah, <laughs> uh, smells like corn chips and ass. Stand by. Go. Watch the barrel. Yeah, sorry about that, Steve. You almost died. Somebody wiped out a minute ago on a chair when we were right when we started. But he's okay. He's fine. He's fine. Everybody's safe. We all got our goggles on. So we he did get... the tuck and roll. Everything's good. Yeah, drop, stop, and roll. And there you go. <laughs> Guys, we're going to switch gears a little bit. I'm really excited about this one. 
because it's an exciting time to be an air gunner because big bores are really kind of just amping up the whole game for all of us. So what we've got in front of us here is a Western Big Boars Bush Buck 45. On my left, I have Kip Perot, Team Air Guns of Arizona, who's also one of the developers for this gun. Back in 16, 17, 15, 15 16, I remember yeah. you taking like first, second, and third place yeah. with this gun. And Big Boar out here shooting out to three, 400 yards, if I remember. If I remember right now, it was three two, 200, I think. Yeah, now they're shooting these out to almost 500 yards. It's insane. Yeah, we're having fun now. On my right, I got Paycon Bayami. Uh, Pay Pay did I say it right? Bayrami. Bayrami, sorry. Yeah. Paycon actually just took this gun to Armac a month back and won himself a couple of grand with a first place in Big Boar. Yeah. So we, we got a lot of um, a lot of opportunity to learn for some guys here. And uh, Kip, I think I'm maybe just gonna let you run with it to begin with. Okay. A lot of these guys don't even know what this is, so maybe start by taking them through it end sure. to end. Sure, no problem. Uh, the Bushbuck was designed to be a very simple rifle. Uh, very basic, very tough for hunting. When they asked me for help on it, I wanted something I could depend on. And you know, I've traveled all over in Africa a few times, all over the United States and hunting with this gun. And I didn't want something that was gonna be finicky and I have issues with. So this gun is built, everybody says like a Sherman tank, and you know, it pretty much is. It served me well. Um, I'm somewhere around 58 big game animals with this rifle, right? This this exact rifle right here. So can I pause you and ask you a question? Because yeah. right now they're at home looking. They just heard you say big game animal. They heard you say Africa, and they're going, wait, this is a this is an air gun. Yeah. Can you just give an idea of the type of game that you're harvesting mm -hmm. over the years, and how old is this gun? Uh, this is. Uh, I don't know, five years old? Okay, so this isn't something, something like that. that just came out. This is something that these guys have been using for a long time. Oh yeah, this gun here's got probably somewhere in the 12, 15,000 rounds through it. Okay, and so that they've got context, what are you hunting with this? I've hunted everything with it from jackrabbits, uh, genic cats in Africa, all the way up to elk here in North America, um, kudu, eland, eland, Cape eland in Africa, 1,500 pound eland. Um, a lot of those videos are on our channel, Ergon Only Adventures. So, I mean, it runs the gauntlet. I've done it from the small stuff up to the really big stuff. I, I've seen you take bear with this on that channel too, if I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, black bear and, I mean, everything. Elk, bear, uh, mountain lion, javelina, coos deer, um, white-tailed deer. This year I'm gonna go mule deer hunting. So, and all, all the hunts that I do on this, um, you know, it's kind of a sore spot is none of it's high fence everything that I hunt on my channel is all free range wild animals um, high fence is fun I do it don't brag about it anybody can go do it yeah but everything this rifle has done for me has all been wild free ranging animals so so the takeaway is that, that this has been through the brush and back oh yeah almost almost tens of thousands of rounds so that they have some context what are you talking as far as what kind of slugs it pushing what speed what power level are we talking about here i mainly use two slugs um, all my ammo comes from high arc hunter ammunition uh pecan has got here a 365 grain that bullet right there i shoot quite a bit 365 grains 452 diameter um, I use that on a lot of animals, and then on the bigger animals, I use a 475 grain high arc hunter. So, you know, it does a really great job for me. Both of them do. The Spitzer, I use that in the competitions too, because that gives your highest level of accuracy out of this gun. And, you know, we punch silhouettes at 400 plus yards. Okay. So, what speed are we talking with that? That bullet's running about 810 to 830 feet per second. That's putting out about 520 to 550 foot pounds of energy. So if I remember from my law enforcement days, we were shooting 45 ACPs with our sidearms then, and I want to say that was high fives, low sixes for foot pounds of energy. Yeah, running about a 230 grain, about 800, 850. Yeah. Yeah. So this one will put a 230 grain. It shoots them too, but I don't like the lighter bullets. The heavier bullets do a lot better job on game, even though they're slower. They have a lot better penetration. Mm -hmm. But a 230 comes out of here at about nine to 930. Do you, how many shots at that speed would you get? You get one shot, well, it depends how you feel it. Okay. Like all PCPs, you have a rainbow. 
All right, so you start on the back side of the rainbow and come over to the front, you yep. have two shots that are a little bit lower velocity than the peak shot. Mm -hmm. I always fill my gun up for the peak shot, 3800 PSI works great in this gun. Mm -hmm. um, I get that one shot and I know what my drop will be on my second shot. Okay. I've shoot it enough that I know what's going to be. And I get 100 yards with my scope on seven power, second focal point scope. Um, I hold the second mill dot at 100 yards, sighted in at 50. So then when I, if I need to pull another shot at 100 yards, I use my 125 yard mark at 100 yards, right on the money. So would it be fair to say then, and correct me if I'm wrong because I probably will be, 400 foot pounds, 500, 400? Or is it different than no, that? No, it's still going to be around 500 and 500. Pretty okay. close. Okay, they're just off a little bit. Instead of being 550-ish up here, uh -huh. and then maybe about 480. Okay, so it's not this, it's more like You're on each side of that. It. Yep. Uh huh. So you do have somewhat of a flat spot at the top. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a two shot deal for the serious hunter basically. On high power. On high power. So it talk also, about that. It also it has high and low power. It has two cocking positions. On high power, like I said, I like to run it at 3,800. That's where I get my peak shot. On low power, about 2,800 to 3,000 pounds is all you put in this gun. And the 230 grain bullets, 180 grain bullets work great at that. You know, you're sitting a blind closer, 40, 50 yards. Oh, Shoot yeah. Dogs or smaller animals, stuff like coyote on. Mm -hmm. Works fantastic. You get three really good shots out of it. I remember, and I, I, I was able to review this. Gosh, it's been a while. You, you sent it to me probably four or five years yeah, ago. Yeah. And I hit ballistic gelatin with this thing at like 100 yards, if I remember in that video. Mm -hmm. And I was knocking the gong at 150, 160. But if I remember, um, it was on the cocking arm, it pulled back to his like one click position yep. and then two click position and right. that was your, your low and high. Right, exactly. Yep. Yeah, there's no So what's the PSI fill again on it? I put 3,800 in it. You can go to about 4,000, 4,100. When but you it, break over 4,100, uh -huh. it's just a lot of pressure for the way that the gun is tuned mm -hmm. with the hammer spring tension and the, the hammer weight. You break over 4,100 and you actually start to go way down. Okay. When you were shooting it, at our Mac, were you just high power in it every high time? High power, 3,800 psi every shot. Uh huh. So you were like tethered. Yes, we were tethered over there, uh, and that, that really helps a lot for those events. If we have someone at home that's new with the tether, do you want to describe like what that is and talk about the equipment, the cost? Just the Basically, you have your uh, regular uh, air tank. You got a hundred cubic inch air tank. Um, we got to connect it to a regulator that always put out a constant 3,800 to the gun. Uh -huh. you, you don't have to have the regulator. Uh, you could you know, yeah. turn the valve off and on every time, but the regulator just makes it so much easier. Just set, set it at 3,800 PSI, and uh, your, every shot's gonna be at 3,800. That's how we were using it in, uh, in Utah. Over here, uh, we were not allowed to tether, and uh, it was a lot more difficult. That's sure. Why I didn't do that well this, this year. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <at> this <event. laughs> I don't know. Pretty and, good. and we had a uh, we had an air tank issue, so I'll blame some yeah. of that on the, on the air tank. <laughs> yeah, the, the pressure gauge on the air tank was not accurate. Uh -huh. So so yeah, you have you know you, you need to have good accurate gauges, and I mean this gun's amazing. I mean you know I was 300 yards up there, and little little practice. I don't shoot as much as Kip, but he allowed me to shoot his gun, and it was uh, it was awesome. Awesome. I, I like it so much I own one. So. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And we're going to circle back and talk more about that. I just kind of wanted to hit that point. Sure. Yeah. Um, what about the um, the barrel? So, you know, everyone at home, we all know like Lothar Walther and and FX barrels. Mm -hmm. and Western, so, Western Big Boards has these barrels custom made. They're custom hammer forged barrels. Oh, cool. And all they right. are uh, the groove and land depth and count and the twist is strictly for Western Big Boards. They had their own mandrels made, so it's their design that's what they use okay cool and um, is it is there like a, a hammer spring that you can adjust if they wanted to play with power or is it like nope. just how they come it's how they come all right they, they were this gun was basically built and tuned by the manufacturer so whoever gets it you don't have to mess with anything you mess with your pressures that's about it okay it's just it is so simple what yeah. about trigger trigger tunable the yeah. trigger is non tunable the oh. trigger the way you tune it it is and it isn't okay let's um, talk about it uh, the way the trigger is, it, it's an old, old trigger system that's been used on old, old guns. Mm -hmm. um, so basically the trigger, the stop, and the sear is all one piece. Okay. And you have two trigger, you have two sear stops, your high and your low power. And the only thing you do to adjust it, one screw, take it off the stock, put a little molly grease on them, your trigger comes back to a nice smooth trigger again. If you try to adjust it up too far, then you get into a point where 
you're, you're, you come over your trigger sear and you're raising it up, you're using your adjustment screw here, you're raising it up, you don't have much bite on it. So with the amount of tension, there's a 50 pound hammer spring in it, mm -hmm. dropping the gun, hitting the gun or something like that, and cause it to go off. I'm remembering that for when I reviewed it. I, re I remember I was able to make that change up until it was just like you touch it and bang, yeah. which was you know, not a great feeling no. with five, 600 <laughs> foot-pounds. It's a cannon. It's a cannon, and it yeah. feels like a cannon, yeah. and it sounds like a cannon. Yeah. But it, um, well, part of the reason for that design, it's a hunting gun. Yeah. The other big thing that people always tell me is, where's your safety? There is no safety on this gun. Your safety's right here. Mm -hmm. A safety on a gun, in my opinion, is one of the worst things you could ever have and makes a gun the most unsafe device there is on the planet. Because a lot of people, as soon as you flip it on safety, all caution goes away, yeah. everything's fine, the gun's on safe. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand, a lot of guns that have safeties, they're a trigger safety, so you can't pull the trigger but they're not a safety that will actually stop the hammer from going forward. Sure. So a lot of firearm manufacturers got in trouble for that. Mm -hmm. So you're your own safety. You know if your gun's cocked or not. Without a safety on it, you're always going to be paying attention more to where your barrel's pointed if your gun's sure. cocked, if it's loaded. Naturally. Yeah. So I'm try I can't remember that far back. Break weight, I was remembering three, four pounds yep. was comfortable. Two is where it started feeling really sketchy. Yep. Exactly. It's about three and a half, four pounds. Okay, cool. The best I, I, thing to do is leave the settings alone on a trigger. They're all set from the factory. Uh -huh. And a little bit of molly grease when it starts getting scratchy on you, and it smooths right out. Wow. The stock is beautiful on this. Do, what can you tell us about it? We had Boyd's make that stock. And, That's a um, Boyd's stock. Yep. Ah. And uh, actually, if you look at the artwork and the stippling here, mm -hmm. that is a bush buck that I shot on my first trip to Africa. That's an actual picture of them they took and digitized and put it in the program to edge. Super cool. So it made me kind of happy when the manufacturer said, hey, give me something to put on there. So it made me excited. If we've got if we've got guys and gals back home who are seriously considering using this as a hunting tool, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what would be your guidance to them as far as um, maximum range would be what? What would be wise? Well, we have to keep in mind that being an ethical hunter. Right. I want to just talk about it. A lot of that doesn't come into the gun. So many people look at their tool as what is ethical for the tool. Mm -hmm. Well, that may not be what's ethical for you or for Paycon or for me. Uh -huh. um, a lot of different situations. The lock time's a lot longer. Your bullet's in flight a lot longer. The sound gets the animal before the flight, before the um, bullet does. So there's a lot of things that come into it. I try to keep all my big game shots at 100. Uh, oh, okay. The farthest deer I have taken with this, mm -hmm. uh, we do have video of it. It was a very stormy evening, very dark, mm -hmm. but you can see it just fine. 188 yards on a white-tailed deer mm -hmm. in, in Virginia. I high-shouldered her. She flipped. That was it. Done. 188. Wow. Um, I, don't, I don't recommend real long shots with their guns. They mm -hmm. definitely have the power to do it, but keeping it closer into the wheelhouse, mm -hmm. keeping it a little closer, mm -hmm. I try to keep all my hunts all my shots about 100 yards. Okay, that's that great, great advice. And I was hoping we could kind of you kind of treat it like touch a bow on, on steroids. Okay. You know, shoot your bow yeah. 50, 60 yards. Shoot great. this 100, 120. Be done. Great, great way to look at it. Yeah. Do you want to talk about optics before we jump over to Paycon and we talk about uh, RMAC a little bit? Well, I've run a few different optics on this gun, and this year I put the Athlon Cronus on here, mm -hmm. and I am telling you what. Athlon optics give you more for your money, I think, than any other scope manufacturer in the market today. That's strong to hear you say that. They are, I mean, the old scope I had on here was 1200 bucks, but this scope, it tracks absolutely perfect. The go click it, the dials on it are so tight, they are definite. Oh, uh, yeah, it's exactly where you put it. Yeah, like I can it. dial nice this scope sharp. out to 300 yards shooting silhouettes, mm -hmm. dial it right back to 50. It's on the money. I have it zeroed at 50. And like I said, Athlon gives you so much for your money. Athlon is a fantastic company. And Crona, Cronus, yeah, the Cronus is their, their upper line. And I also have their Aries, which is stepped down. Mm -hmm. I have a but I have the Midas Tax now. I have uh, the Talos. I really like it. I don't work for Athlon, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not sponsored by anybody, but that scope has really amazed me since I put it on this gun. They're out here. Athlon's out here at the event, and I'm seeing a lot of guys and gals running their scopes. Yep. I said it before in a previous interview, and, and it's the truth. I noticed these scope mounts are adjustable scope mounts, mm -hmm. and I see you have it doped over here. Yep. Can you talk? You want to talk a little bit about trajectory? Yeah, those are the Eagle Vision adjustables. They are amazing. They tighten down better than any other adjustable on the market. 
um, raising the back, you can see the gap that we have back here, mm -hmm. no gap up front, mm -hmm. that gives me, that's basically like having a rail with MOA in it. So we're out here target shooting and we're flinging out here this, this year, we're going out to 395. Um, you have to have that or these big heavy slugs, those velocities just won't get out. Could, what kind of drop are we seeing? You know, I've never really sat down and mathematically figured it yeah, out. Yeah, ballpark it. Shoot, 300 yards. I don't know, eight feet, 28 feet. I'm not sure. It's a lot. It's, <laughs> it's a, a lot. lot. It's launching a more <laughs> than distances, yeah. but it gets, it gets a little more. Yeah, it's it hard. Yeah. Pictures of the bell. Oh, yeah. It's hard. Still at that distance. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, I want to jump over to Paycon, and I want us to compare notes from when I reviewed this gun to when we had all that success with it a, a month back. So I remember the hardest thing for me was learning how to shoot it well. Like I couldn't figure out how to hold it, how to shoulder it, where to put the pressure, where not to put the pressure. And and I was just hoping maybe you could shed some light on that because obviously, you know, you took home a trophy and you beat a lot of really good competitors. I mean, there was some strong competition out there. I surprised myself. And you surprised a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, just, uh, how do you, I mean, how did you do it? Well, to answer your question, I used it off of uh, was it off a bag. I forget. Mm -hmm. we were using a bag. Yeah, I was a bit off a bag, and the way I was holding it, I like to hold the gun nice and tight because it does <laughs> kick. And obviously, you don't, you know, not, like other air guns, you don't want to have your eyes too close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have a nice ring, but yeah, uh, I like. I'll be back now. I found it likes right. to be held tight, you, and and I mean, that trigger is amazing. So you got to you have to be ready for it, and it, and it startles you like it should like a firearm shooting, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you don't want to anticipate it and um, I mean, it, was, it, it was just uh, spot on you know the dope that um, we had together with uh, Kip spot on so you were his spotter yeah he was my uh, spotter I kind of went on school on him you yeah. know he shot first and I was taking notes mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so you know so, um, Don't let him kid you. Big guy is a really good <laughs> shot. I know he's a good shot. He's, he's a dang good shot. I mean, for five years, I've been following you around um, with the camera out it's, here. It's hit and miss. And you're always you know, doing good everything, things. Every, you know, everything's, everything just lined up. But it was, it was uh, it's a great shooting gun. It's uh, it's repeatable. It I, is. That's what I like about it. Well, you were on the, so you were on the bag or the bipod? Bag. It was the bag for sure. It was the bag. So you're on the bag, so you like the firm oh, shoulder. Were you putting your cheek in? Because I also remember, dude, this will rattle your feelings out. <laughs> I kind of remember that too. Yeah. So what, what was going on there? I had it tight against my shoulder and just 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 a slight slight cheek position. That's it. That's it. No, any downward it. pressure up here? Or? No, no. It was just I'm trying to hold it so just you can go straight back. I don't want it to do any of this. So it's like, like, oh yeah. Like a, like a tank. It mm -hmm. feels like a tank when you shoot this thing. Mm -hmm. So you want it to go straight back, and uh, you know, and it's repeatable uh, because every time we went to the dope, it answered. So yeah, I mean, the gun the gun is amazing. It shoots really well. Especially with that ammo. So what do you want to talk about um, uh, the ranges that you guys saw out in Utah? Yeah, that was yeah. Like, yeah. So how does that work for someone that's never been there? You have a spotter, you have a shooter, you have different distance targets. Your job is to make sure he knows the range and he knows the dope. You know, do you talk about wind too? Yeah, a little bit. Like just guns, maybe take them through it because they may want to do it, you know? Yeah, these big or there. bullets aren't affected as much by wind as you would think. Uh -huh. So there's not too much that goes into that. But, you know, having a spotter, a lot of things go into your spotter. You're watching the regulator because we were able to tether there. Mm -hmm. So you're watching the regulator, make sure the pressure's right. Watching them load, make sure it doesn't double load or anything like that. Tell them the dope. Did you reset your dope? Did you get your dope right? Making mm -hmm. sure you back each other up. everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then calling your shot. If you hit, missed the target, where'd you hit? Or you hit right. a little left and low. Okay, you need to aim a little higher and right. That's the most important bit. thing with this gun because when you shoot, you, there's no way you're going to be able to see where it's hit through that scope. Because it's, because so much it's such, such a yeah, rattle. Yeah, by the time you come back on, you saw a little bit of dust. You're like, where did it hit? Oh, you were like two inches to the right or three inches to the right. And you make that uh, correction. Uh, yeah, there's no way you can keep it on target the whole time. When you so make the a spotter is. Half the battle. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. When you make a correction, are you making a correction here, or are you making a correction it, in your approach? In my approach, uh, holding left, right, because uh, uh, you know some of those distances. I think the two hundred and yeah, he's got his notes I, right yeah, here. Yeah, I got my notes. So, so, so take him through two, it, man. Two ninety is the raccoon that I hit. Like some of those, some of those silhouettes were uh, narrow, so you, you didn't have a lot of correction. But you know, like Kip was saying, you don't have to hold too much for wind. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty flat. Mm. Uh, the so, only one I missed 
I think it's the target up on the hill of the um, Utah, sorry. U Utah logo. I, had that, I, I scoped it at 274 yards, and I was 48 MOA uh, at that distance. And I, that's the only one I missed slightly to the right. I think it was me. You know, how, uh, how important is because that? Because it was uphill and I was, you know, I was on your knees in the car. Well, the, like this, the shot cycle on this has got to be relatively slow. Very slow. Yeah. Very slow. Yeah. So yeah. then, in my mind, follow through, through becomes Very big. so Very insanely big. critical. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. so on that note, we were out here shooting. Uh, Claudio was here and he wanted to shoot my bush buck, so he's shooting. He sat down. I had it on the bag over here on the small board range. We're shooting at night. He shot it and he looks at me and said, Kip, and he's go down one inch and I said no 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 don't touch me <laughs> then he shot again he says yeah one inch I said no 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 I told him put your finger right there so shooting on the bag down on the bench I said just lay your finger around the side of the stock he did it and it was right on bulldog and that goes back to what you, you just hit on and what I had to explain to him is your lock time is so much longer that projectiles in there so much longer is that guns recoiling that barrels coming up it's up here the bullet exits you're holding it down the barrels only here and it exits were you guys talking about that when you were doing your? your no, because I have a bush buck, uh, so, I, so you're and, and I've shot it before, so I was familiar with the gun, uh, and and the hold kind of came back. Uh, you know, you just gotta make sure it's not canted at those distances, of mm -hmm. course, and and just following through, not popping up to see where it's going, because the tendency to want to see because you can't see it through the scope. Mm -hmm. So you have to st stay through. I was like, I hit it. I'm like, yeah, you got it. I was like, Ooh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so all of them were surprises. <laughs> totally. It was, it's so cool just to hear you talk about hold and approach yeah. and follow through because that's like one of my big topics of fascination with air guns because mm -hmm. you know the audience is always telling me that you know air guns aren't hold sensitive and for me all of them are insanely oh, hold yeah. sensitive. Oh yeah. And it's it interesting to hear Paycon talk about you want that recoil to come straight back. That's how you know you've got it right. If it does this, if it does this, if it does this, yeah. you know, you, you're not doing it right. But right. as soon as it starts doing this, you know you've got that hold just right and you'll see your lead. A lot of that also one. goes into the design of the gun and the stock. You can shoot one gun that just, it's violent and, and twist every time it shoots. Yeah. That's a lot of the design on how it's inlet, how the action sits in the stock, how the stock was designed, all that stuff. All that comes into play. Mm -hmm. So you just bought one. So what are we talking money-wise here? Give them an idea. Like around seventeen hundred bucks for the gun. Yeah, I mean it's very reasonable for what it is. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot, That's a good point. A lot of engineering. Too. That's a good. <laughs> well, you just turned a light on because you know I work at Air Guns Barrel. I sell a lot of guns. I talk to tons of people. Yeah. Buy and sell and stuff. And this gun was not built to be an economy big bore. It wasn't made that way. This gun was built to have more elegance and to be a working tool that was going to hold up. This gun comes with a lifetime warranty. That's I don't care amazing. if you've had a it. Lifetime warranty. I don't care if you That's had it six years. That's unheard of in our industry. Yeah. yeah, if you had it six years, you had it eight years, whatever it might be, anything happens that's leaking, whatever, you pay the shipping to get it into the store and pay the shipping back. We go through it, rebuild it, put a new valve. Everything's done. It's a lifetime warranty on this gun. So many big boards out there today, so many companies in my opinion, because mm -hmm. I sell them all, talk to customers. So many big boards on the market today are trying to beat the market. So they're building an economy gun. After people buy them and shoot a lot of them, Keep they're calling up. up wanting something better. What can I get that's better? Mm -hmm. I have a customer in Texas and he called me up and asked me and he just said, you know, he had bought another gun and a 357 caliber and he said, these guns just don't have the power to kill these big hogs that we have on our property. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, a 357 should do you a really good job. And he said, man, we've lost so many of them. And he said, I've tried different bulls, tried all this. And he said, will that gun, will the bush buck kill hogs? And I said, yeah. I said, everything I've killed, I've had no issue with it. It's all mm -hmm. shot placement. And he, he went a couple months calling me, talking to me. He finally bought one. Called and? me up and he said, I cannot believe the power of this gun. And you know, when you move to a 45, I really feel that a 45 caliber is the ultimate caliber in an air gun. People always hear, ooh, 50 caliber, I'm gonna go, that's bigger. The 50 caliber, if you do your test, do your ballistic, we shot them in jail. 50 caliber, even though it might be moving faster, mm -hmm. it gets a lot less penetration. And you have to rely on a lot of penetration and a combination of knockdown. So 45 for me, it's I like really the perfect sweet spot. Mm -hmm. It is, it's, especially on some perfect. of these big game that are these are big around. Oh yeah, big around animals. I've shot deer. Good one. I shot at uh, 93 yards in Virginia. Mm -hmm. Nice buck. And 
I mean, right in the shoulder bone, not the blade. Mm -hmm. Shattered the shoulder bone going mm -hmm. out and exited the other shoulder bone. Completely just, busted just both fronts. Tremendous, tremendous. Hey, hey Con, yeah. do you shoot powder burners? I do I, not. I, no, well then, I switch to air guns. Well, that's all right. This could be a good question for you. So, um, I get a lot of comments with some of the audience that you know, coming from powder burners. How is this interesting? You know, like like they just some of them just don't get it, and like I get it that they don't get it. But like, why why would you invest that kind of money in an air gun when you can just have a powder burner? Because I still have a lot of hair on my head to pull out. <laughs> okay, basically. talk about that. They'll make you pull your hair out. Air guns will they'll fool with you, but. No, it's just something different. I've hunted all my life with firearms, and I switched to archery because, for me personally, firearms got way too easy. It's just, I'm gonna go kill a deer. I'm gonna kill a deer. It's done. So many things can go wrong. The temperature in the air it can be super cold one morning. It can be really hot in the afternoon, especially here in Arizona. I might fill this up when I leave my tent, and maybe we're on the mules chasing lions or chasing bears, and you know, my tube's sticking out in the sun. If I give it a full 4,000 fill or 3,800 pound fill, mm -hmm. and that heats up, now it's up 42, 43. Now I valve block. If I'm gonna shoot 100 yards across the canyon, I'm gonna fall low. There's so many different things that go in there that you have to learn and keep, keep in your mind. For me, it's more of a challenge to hunt with one, and it's something different that I had never done before. Mm -hmm. And I haven't hunted with a center fire. I think the last thing I killed with a center fire was an elk. Probably about four years ago, five years ago. It's just, it makes me feel less weird to hear Kip's story because, like, these guys don't know this about me because I usually don't, you know, I don't think I've ever shared it, but yeah. I've got, and I mean this in plural, I've got AKs, ARs, shotguns, yeah. you know, handguns, you know, that, that, that I love and are really fun, but you do, you just kind of get bored of it after a while, and this is just, air guns are just so interesting. Yeah. You know, another good point is uh, ammo is a lot uh, cheaper. Well, that's true. I mean, we're, we're, you're, you're two for a dollar now with a lot of the center fire stuff. And but the cost of lead's going up, and it's hard to find ammo these days too. But, yeah. But yeah. Speaking but, of that, the support, like the bot, like let's get into cost real quick. So we're seventeen hundred for the gun. How much are we for the scope? That scope, uh, don't quote me on it. But I think it's around fourteen or sixteen hundred. But Athlon has them, if I'm not mistaken, in this five, six, seven hundred dollar hey, range Athlon too. Athlon has a Talos. That's it. That little guy is like 150, I think it's $160 for a four to 12. And it's lightweight, it's a great scope to go on a hunting gun like this mm -hmm. because it's small and lightweight. But the glass you get in it for that price, you gotta be up around 220, 250 in any other scope manufacturer to get it. So you're a buck 50 on the mounts, 500 to 1500 on the scope, 17 on the gun, the fill equipment. The, do you remember that regulator? What do those run? Uh, the one I got, a friend of mine got for well, me was about 650 but you don't there's, have to do that. No, there's actually an inline rig you can put in your tank in a 300 bin. I mm -hmm. think you're about 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once you get it adjusted, you set screw it, okay. boom, done. Just in case you guys, you know, we got some new, um, some newcomers, you don't have to tether. That's more for events like this. You take it out hunting, you just need an external air tank to fill this onboard reservoir here. And then you're good to go, kind of as as we previously spoke. Yeah, when I hunt, when I'm on the mules or I'm hiking, I've got a small Omega tank, mm -hmm. my 18 cubic foot Omega. Okay, That's fits in, in my the backpack. backpack. Yeah, that gives me eight to ten shots on this one. I'm out in the field, which is yeah, all you would ever take you hunting anyway. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's Fine. great, great information. And those are how much? Yeah, like four. Yeah, four. Yeah, four, -ish, yeah, four like or five. Is what but, I was but, but guys. You don't have to jump into this and put a $1,600 scope on it. Right. Super, you don't have to do that. This gun, an Athlon Talos for $160, $50 mounts on it, $40 mounts. You're out hunting because most hunting, if you want a hunting gun, you're going to be doing out to about $100, $120. you have got it done. It's done for that. And you've got a gun that's going to last you a lifetime. Yeah, $2,500 to three grand. we will call it total nut with your bottle. You haven't seen the new one either, have you? No, there's a new bush buck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. Did you make a bush buck pull, uh, bull pup or what? <laughs> no. 22 and a half inch barrel instead of a 30. Oh, okay. It'll run. So a, a carbine. Yeah, it runs about 410 to 430 foot pounds with that bullet. Uh huh. But you can also put the air bolts in it. Oh gosh, the bow hunter. The Here air comes. bolts. That's cool. <laughs> well, a lot of guys, and in a lot of places here in Arizona. It's becoming them, legal around the country yeah. to do this. Well, if you're handicapped in Arizona, if you have a handicap license or a crossbow permit, mm -hmm. you can use this on most hunts in the state of Arizona. 
buddy of mine got drawn. Finally, after like 17 years, he drew an elk tag, archery elk tag. He messed his shoulder up working on a truck. He's a mechanic. Could not pull his bow. He's going to turn his tag back to the Arizona Game and Fish Department. I said, no, no, I got you taken care of. Go get your crossbow permit. He said, I'm not going to buy a crossbow. I said, I've got you taken care of. I'm going to mess up your other shoulder. When, I, bush told him, yeah. <laughs> when I told him what I had, he looked at me and goes, is that even legal? I said, yes, they legalized it last year. He went and killed a 330-inch, 8-inch bull with it wow. just to beside himself. So, but that gun is putting a 400 grain arrow mm -hmm. at 650 feet per second. Jeez. And the accuracy is insane. Woo. We were shooting in Virginia, we're goofing around, we're shooting 300 yards with it. With arrows. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. But, guys, again, you know, 100 yards is where I would hunt with it. So, the cool thing about that gun, though, yeah. you can throw an arrow in it, cock it, and drop that bullet in it. It shoots bullets and arrows, it does it both, and it's smaller, lighter, it's easier to carry in the Yeah, that carbine sounds exciting. Yep. Guys, you know, the, I'm not good at big boars, and I'm definitely not good at the bush buck, so I feel like I'm forgetting to ask something that might be meaningful to the guys back home. But to close it out, is there anything that we're forgetting? I mean, I feel like we've touched on a lot of stuff. No, I mean, you did a great review at, um, you know, on your channel on this gun. So a long time I, watched, I watched that Thank before you. I bought one. So yeah, you covered it on that video if anyone wants to read you know, more about it. Yeah, I mean it. Appreciate um, it. But other than that, I think we covered everything. I think we pretty well hit it. You yeah. know, and the, the main thing to hit on is uh, it's not built to be an economy gun. It's yeah. built to be a lifetime gun. It's this is the good stuff. And you can pass it on to your grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. You can buy it's, three it's or four. It's got a lifetime guarantee. <laughs> yeah, buy three or four of the economy guns <laughs> yeah. first, and yeah. when you find out about them and you move into something yeah. like this, you buy your bush buck, yeah. you're done. You don't have to buy another air, air guns are like RVs, bass boats, and nice cars. You'll save a lot of money buying your third one first. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you just no, really will. That's exactly And everybody, we all make that same mistake no matter what yep. we're buying. Oh, yep. yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I can't thank you enough for being so generous with your time. I, of course. I know you've been running around here <laughs> like an air hose with the end always, cut off. And, and Paycon, I just yanked him off of his 50-yard relay. So thank you guys so much hey, thanks, for sharing with thank these you. guys. We appreciate it. Thank and, you. And good luck out here. Thanks for giving appreciate us the time. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Gotcha. I skunked this one, guys. It wasn't good for me. It wasn't good.
with that being said, best of luck to everyone competing. Shooters ready? Damn. Smells like black and milds. It's too expensive, bud. It's too expensive. You've wandered into executive. Our 2019 EBR champion, Nikolai Boldoff, is shooting on lane 11. He's the man to beat. And another note. If you want to give him any slack on uh, lane 35, Mr. Steve Buchanan, it is his birthday today. So happy birthday to you, Steve. I'm confident none of you will cut him any slack. But anybody in lanes 21 through 40 need more time, raise your hand if you need more time. No problem. It backwards. Ugh. I'm going to try my target. Uh-oh. Every target. Somebody shot my target. Because <laughs> I haven't done it yet. Raise your hand. Or, let somebody know. No, no, no. Or a pellet of mine flew a good eight inches to the right. <laughs> Probably not at 50 yards. It is really. Like, I didn't even shoot over there. Yeah, it's on the second square, and I'm shooting the practice one. <laughs> we're rolling, we're rolling. All right, so Steve and I rent this house uh, for EBR, and we arrive, and it's 85 degrees in the house. So we go to turn the thermostat down, and it will only go down to 74 degrees. It's locked. There's a pin code on it. Who in their right mind sleeps at 74 <laughs> degrees? So we called the property management company, and they didn't have any pin number on file, so we insisted they call the owner to um, give us the pin code so we can sleep comfortably. Well, after going a few rounds with the owner... Four hours! Yeah, he agreed to lower the temperature to 72 degrees. <laughs> Stingy bastard. 72 degrees at the thermostat, not everywhere else in the house. And uh, so Steve and I didn't have a very nice sleep last night. Um, so we decided to take matters into our own hands. <laughs> And uh, what do two young, intelligent men do when they don't get what they want? 
They improvise. <laughs> they go to Walmart. We go to Walmart. <laughs> See that hey, one that's going straight you're up? you're back again today. That one. Look down there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See yeah. the one that's pointing oh, straight that yeah. way? And this one's coming that way. So you're going to have to pay attention to those to bottom the red two. One? Yep. Those are the two that matter. These ones up here, don't worry about them. But that helps you where yeah. he's got the red and the yellow one there. Yeah, they're so, going both directions. Yeah. So now you got to watch those. Now they're, now they're in sync. Oh, guys, I snagged us a good one today. <laughs> May I introduce Jason Barnes, not to be confused with Jason Bourne, although he's probably almost as badass. Guys, got to tell you, this is one of those guys, this is one of those dudes. Okay, I'm going to get it wrong, I'm sure, because it's a lot to keep up there, but I know you got a, 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 a third place here last year uh, at RMAC just a month back. You got another third right. place. Um, I, I, the year before that, I think you were top three in every single discipline and sportsman's class out there. He's an yeah. awesome FX tuner, so we're going to get into all of that. Have I left anything out and, no. and setting you up, man? No, you're making me look pretty cool. <laughs> I am, I'm good with that. I just want to get these guys paying attention because you're one of those dudes that we can learn a lot from. Great. So, so I was hoping that just to give them some foundation and some context, okay. maybe bring them through, tell them what your gun is, kind of do like an end-to-end, -end, bringing them through OEM hardware, aftermarket hardware, caliber, like that kind of stuff. Okay. And then maybe we can dive into some tuning. Okay. Does that work for you? Great, great. All right, tip to tip, yeah. man. Let it so rip. We're, we're looking at uh, an original silver MK2 converted uh, to the power plenum. It has the uh, 30 caliber 700 millimeter with the original 1 and 37 superior. Not so, the most recent one. Not the most recent. Okay. Not the most recent. That has a little faster rate of twist. Yep. So uh, it was originally a 1 and 40 left hand twist. Uh, and I changed over to the 1 and 37, which they both shoot very similar. Both, both very good pellet liners uh, for the 100 yard discipline. Okay. So we got an FX impact, 30 cal. Original smooth twist X liner, which is the one in thir 34. 37. One in 37. 37, okay. Yeah, yeah, the, the slow twist pellet liner, I think they call it now. Okay. Uh, so in, in internally, uh, it's got the, and you've, you've heard this in some of your other stuff, the monster power wheel, yeah. which is similar to what comes on the M3 now, uh, multiple position, one directional cam power wheel, which is, which is really nice. It's kind of a finer, uh, finer adjustment. I've got the, the digital gauges, which you've talked about in some of your videos. I'm a big fan of them. The, the sec mats. Yeah, I've got them on both Terrific. the rig and the, and the tank. Okay, cool. Uh, so I've got, uh, I've got the, uh, Crawford and Lip uh, rail, the extended and extended rail. Mm -hmm. uh, been talking to Steve uh, from Crawford and Lip and uh, kind of doing some doing some stuff with that as far as uh, trying to stabilize the the shroud a little bit mm -hmm. uh, with different things. So you're helping uh, him develop that? To work, no, he to de make he developed this. Uh, I've I've just added a little bit to it. Uh, you know, I'm using his his pick rails for some added. Uh, added weight in the front. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the metal bottle. Uh, I like a little bit of weight. It doesn't. You know, a lot of people have have added weight and don't care for it. The gun can get jumpy depending on how you, uh, you know, how you set it up. So, uh, so then you, if I'm following you right, you've replaced the original 480 cc carbon fiber bottle with this. With the 500 metal. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, a little bit, of, a little bit of weight forward. To settle, kind of settle the gun on yeah. the Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, Kenny Hicks is, is done a lot, done a lot with weight too, um, and uh, you know the the, the saddle bars uh, on the sides uh, that adds that adds about two pounds. You know, and I can move them uh, forward and back depending on how I like the weight distribution. Mm -hmm. And then this is just a brass rod that I turned down uh, and added it to Thane's bag rider. The Saber Tactical bag, bag Rider, uh, and that can be that can really really help. Depending on your bag, sometimes it can be real jumpy mm -hmm. uh, when you when you shoot. So all right, uh, so so then 
These are a pound each then? These little guys here? You they're, said they're two pounds? Yeah, with that in the rings, it's it's like 1.8 1. 1. to two pounds. So you just took scope rings, you put them on the side pick rails, yeah. and you put yeah. weights. Where did you get the weights? Is that like just something uh, you I made? Tur I turned them on a lathe Okay. Uh, at, at, at work. I so just like this machining. one? Yeah, yeah, just, just rough. Uh, and then uh, the the saber uh, arca rail on the on the front again I can I can really get the get the balance the fulcrum point where, where I want it depending on where I distribute the weight mm -hmm. and uh, you know sometimes that just makes me feel a little bit better the the gun feels a little bit smoother mm -hmm. uh, depending on the on the tune and all of that okay all right and then I've got the old original uh, the K1 Crawford and Lip. Uh, shoulder rest. I've got the the K2 on a couple of my other guns, but that one, this is my bench gun, and that's all it does. Does this does the shoulder rest come with the monopod, like as all one yeah. unit? Yeah. From Crawford and Lip. Yeah, just like the just like the K2 does, and it's it's very nice for tuning or or uh, sitting on the bench like that. I rarely shoot with with that portion of it. Um, but it's really, really handy, and you can totally remove it if you want to. I was just going to ask, when you're shooting out here for the dollars, are you shooting off of this, or are you putting it in your shoulder, you putting it on a bag? Like, what are you doing? Shoulder and bag. Shoulder yeah. and bag. Yeah. Uh -huh. Depending on what the weather's giving me, sometimes I like to shoot really, really fast uh -huh. uh, and take what it's given me. Uh, sometimes I like to shoot really, really slow, uh, just depending on what the weather's what the weather's doing. Sometimes that hurts me, sometimes it helps. So this would be more for hunting then, um, for, in your case. Something yeah, like tune. I use it a ton for tuning. Mm. Uh, just checking, checking, and make sure everything's everything's tight where I want it. You know, it's just really, really stable. Uh, when I'm when I'm chronographing, uh, I chronograph thousands of pellets, uh, just looking for that perfect, perfect harmonic tune. Perfect guns, just really, really happy, and guns happy. And I'm we're gonna happy. get into all of that. I promise y'all. So this is a 30 cal. What pellet are you shooting out here? Uh, the 44 uh, uh, FX. The FX or the JSP, JSP. Or, F, or FX 44 yeah, grain? Yeah, I shoot both. Okay. And then your your liner or your barrel, you know, the lingo, are you supporting it in, in there with the O-rings or how yes. do you do it? Talk about that. So uh, my, I, have a, I have a backup 30 that shoots really good and I have the carbon fiber liner in that. Mm -hmm. I just barely in the last, well, right before RMAC. Uh, I gave that a try, um, and and uh, it it was it was good. It didn't it didn't I didn't see a, a jump in improvement. It was already a pretty good gun, but it didn't get worse. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this one actually has the O rings uh, taped. Uh, I uh, Up with the Teflon. No, uh, the Teflon works really well, but uh, you have to retape them every time. Mm -hmm. I actually use uh, an aggressive, really tight electrical tape mm -hmm. over the o-ring mm -hmm. multiple wraps and then i i have to thread it in you're pushing it in there hard oh yeah you're yeah you can't push it in uh i don't like the harmonic wave i believe gets much smaller if it's not rattling around okay so, so so what we're talking about if if you're new to this sport or maybe you're new to this platform there's a there's kind of a free floating barrel that they call a liner inside of this shroud right here and and inside of the shroud, you have that, that free floating barrel and it has like a little sleeve kind of around it. Right. And some, some guys like to just let it float inside of that sleeve. Some like to run rubber O-rings on there. Which comes stock. Which it comes with the rubber O-rings. Yeah. Um, they've got FX, the manufacturer, has an aftermarket carbon fiber kind of sleeve that fits between the liner barrel, that outer sleeve, and, and the shroud right. to kind of stiffen. I've always found it interesting that I've, I've been able to be successful with all three. Yes. I think it just kind of depends on your overall setup and harmonics. And it does, it depends on the tune. Uh, yeah. This gun stock, I got it uh, two weeks before EBR 2019, uh, and it shot very, very well. I was lucky enough to get a, a really good moderate tune in it, mm -hmm. um, and it, it shot fantastic in that configuration but as i changed tunes uh and changed rig rig settings and, and hammer settings that would deteriorate with a with a more robust containment if you will uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, that seemed to be a lot more liberal between 
your 830s to 930s, if you will, with this particular pellet and liner. Uh, there was very little difference. I could move around and still be really good with the uh, with the stock setup. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, whoa, that's really really bad. Yeah. I don't I don't see that as much. Okay. Uh, with with containing things a little bit more. So my belief is is that harmonic wave instead of being like this, mm -hmm. it's like this. Uh huh. So All even right. even moderators and things don't seem to affect me as much uh, as they used to. I was just peeking to see if they could see it. So this is an FX Impact X, guys which would make it the model three years back or two years back? Uh, this was brand new in August of 19, right before EBR 19. So two, three years kind of in, uh, in yeah. that range. Yeah. All right. And um, moderator, you want to talk about that? Yeah, the moderator. Uh, so I, I, I make uh, some of my own moderators. This is the original Donnie uh, that comes uh, stock with it. This is even the old uh, 20 millimeter. Uh, shroud and barrel, so most of them are half 20 now. Okay. So this is the the, the old original uh, 20 millimeter that you could order as an OEM accessory right. to this gun. Right. Right. Okay. So this is the this is the stock moderator that comes uh, as an upgrade availability with the impact. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe they still ha you have that option. Uh, great moderator. Uh, for, have you experimented for the size. with the big ones and yeah. little ones and long yeah. ones? Like, yeah, what did you and, find? and I've made quite a few. So I, I switch. Sometimes you'll see me with uh, a, a fairly large one that I've made. It's 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 just plain uh, a plain can. It's kind of like the maybe comparable to the Ronin mm -hmm. without the cool stuff that Donnie has on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's more of a, a weight thing. Uh, not it, it moderates well, just like just like the the Ronin or the. Uh, some of the some of the bigger ones, but uh, I just use it to to add a little bit of weight. You know, kind of like what they're doing now with the harmonic. Tube. Well, I was going to ask you to share with them how do you, how do you personally pick a moderator? Is it for sound? Is it for tuning? How do you know which one you want to run? It is on in, in this discipline on the on on the bench gun. It is definitely all about performance. So okay. I don't I don't care what it sounds like. Uh -huh. uh, the guy next to me yesterday, I had to put in earplugs. Uh, and was that Nikolai he, with his open? No, Nikolai wasn't that bad. There was another one. <laughs> Nikolai that, wasn't that bad. That was coming out the side. Nikolai was just down for me, but uh, yeah, it, it it really just depends on uh, when I when I sit down to shoot. I want it to be all about me, my assumption mentally that my gun is perfect, and, and I don't go there in my mind at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have complete and total confidence in your gun sure. uh, that it's going to shoot in the exact same hole every time. Whether it does or doesn't is, is irrelevant, but up here, it, it, when you, you aim that in that confidence. spot, it's going to go in yeah. that spot. So and that's how you pick the moderator. Whatever yeah. shoots best for it. Yeah, and and you know I'll change I'll I'll change tunes a little bit, and mm -hmm. and this one does very very well uh, across the board. I shot uh, I shot Armac with this with the stock moderator, uh, and did did really did really really well. Got beat some by some really good shooters. All right, now this is a uh, these uh, metal bottles. It's, a, it's not 250 bars. It's like 230 or something, isn't it? Uh, no, they 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 rate them for 250. They do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you're a 250 bar fill. So if you guys don't know it, this FX imp, this has the amp the, the amp regulator. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the it's the. Uh, so one amp regulator. Right. 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 The power plenum. Do you want to talk about maybe that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, you know, interesting subject. When when uh, the power plenums came out and they became available, I installed it myself. Uh, and I found immediately uh, in EBR 2019, I was running about 140 bar in 30 caliber. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was a great tune. The power plenum just went, oh, no, 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 no. You're going to come down at least, uh, you know, 20 or 30 uh, bar mm -hmm. uh, from that on the regulator mm -hmm. to get the same uh, performance. So uh, to that to that note, I, I, I am a huge fan of the higher rig pressure versus the low. Okay. The, the power plenum came out and Giles was like, oh, 90 bar on 30 that's, that's how I like, I run them low, 110, 120, yeah, even down to 90. It, it, they... they the, I tell everybody that asks me the problem with the impact. Yeah, it'll shoot really, really good. Uh huh. Not tuned very well, in in, in my opinion. Okay. So uh, I think that gives a lot of people um, some false indications because mm -hmm. they can they can go to another level. 
Uh, that that could definitely many, many be times. me in my reviewing. Uh, I run them low. Good. But I run them low, 80, 90, 100, 110. But I don't want to steal all your thunder. I'm definitely going to pick you apart with that. Right. But well, and a lot of it is personal preference. They're, they're a different feel. Um, my, my background, I was actually a professional paintballer for about five or six years. Okay. And I did all the tuning with those. So when I got into air guns, the technology was, was very similar sure. on regulators and high pressure air. Sure. So what this is, if you don't know, guys, these FX impacts, standard equipment now um, is this power plant. And, um, but when he bought his, it looks like that was kind of when it, it went in their change and then he added it after the fact. It used to just be kind of a little um, bridge, if you'd call it, to get the air from, from this part of the gun to this part of the gun. Well, what they've done is take, basically taken that bridge and they've made it bigger. And the best way I know how to describe that is let's say you have, you've got a spitball in your mouth and you want to spit that spitball. If you take this plenum and make your lungs bigger, it enables you to spit that spitball. That's a, that's a, that's a great analogy. Hard, hard, harder. All, all this is, this is, the, this is the area that your valve gulps air from. That's your storage for that's your, your valve. your storage, your immediate reservoir. So, and it takes air a while to get from here to back here. So if you make that reservoir larger, it enables you two things. Um, what we were just talking about with um, like the efficiency and, and the bars, or the, and the PSI and the bars, but it also enables you to generate more power because that valve has immediate access to a larger amount of air. But I'd love it if you would talk more about what you just were with the low bars versus the high bars. Okay. Yeah, as far as the, how you're pressurizing this power plant. Okay, and, and again, you know, keep in mind, uh, this is just personal preference. Yeah. Um, I've, I'm, I'm sure uh, that I, I've been beaten multiple times by someone shooting at a, at a lower at a lower pressure, but uh, yeah. So the I like the guns quiet and what I call snappy. Mm -hmm. um, they can be poofy and shoot very good, mm -hmm. uh, and that's just that valve dwell time. Yeah. Uh, by dwell, how how long is it open? Uh, I like it to be very very snappy, very very quick, uh -huh. um, and that even lets me change barrel lengths. Uh, and surprisingly, you don't get a lot of the velocity drop with the shorter barrels if you're if you're snappy. Not as much as you would uh, with the lower tune. But that's a, that's a nugget right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually the first time I went to a 600 millimeter, I called Justin Jacobson and said it gave me no velocity. Yeah. And he said, "Oh, you, you know, you're 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 really really quick on your on on your dwell time mm -hmm. uh, because lots of times it's a significant uh, increase or decrease with length, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I I I like to uh, tune to a sound and a feel, uh, and then again across a chronograph, uh, tens and tens and tens of pellets uh, to get a very uh, consistent uh, speed." And you and I both know that doesn't necessarily equate to accuracy. Not yet, yep. But sure. the gun, uh, if the gun's consistent, again, you have a better feel about it. You have a confidence that the gun is so repeatable yeah. that you can focus on shooting and not anything with the gun. If you think you have a problem with the gun and you're in the middle of a match here in Toronto. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting hearing Jason kind of give his angle on this. And, and truth be told, guys, he sounds a lot like like the way they talk at FX. And when I say FX, I mean FX in Mariestad, Sweden. You know, when I visit the factory, they talk about, you know, those dwell times and they tune the gun to, to a certain sound. And I love the words you are using. I think you used that, what, what is it? Like a snap versus- Snappy. Like, or for poof or a poofy? Poofy or snappy. Yeah, poofy or snappy. I, I use the word cough. Like sometimes yeah. you can tune them to yeah. where they're like, ah, like that, or you can tune them to where they're like, cut. You know, and then, and then there's yeah. kind of an in-between it's just this perfect, perfect little like snap. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and I, right? I see a uh, gold line. I see a lot of I, I see yeah, a lot on the on the right you know, on the forums and Air Gun Nation, and it, it uh, Open you know people are and leave them empty. Uh, writing down their tunes. Uh, yeah. And one of the first things I see too often uh, is hammer hammer all the way in yeah to start yeah and there there's I'm never even. Close. close. I do it that. opposite too. I back it all the way out. Why would you try to hit it so hard to oppose it on the other side with, with pressure with, with the valve? Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know you can, you can swing it. a much smaller hammer and get beautiful smooth results. Yeah. Uh, put in earplugs and shoot these. And there's a. 
bang, and it will ring through your ears. You'll see it on camera with some of the people. Yeah. Uh, and then it, it can be a lot smoother and a lot more consistent. You sound a lot like, I love it. Now you're talking my language. This <laughs> sounds like me and the tuning guides, like the late Maverick tuning guide. You know, we were kind of right. talking all about uh, all about that same stuff, you know. And, yeah, and, uh, exactly. And I, they would ask me, like, what's, they want to know, like, what's the measurement on the hammer spring, you know, that, that little screw on the back, you know. You know, and I'd give it to them to get it in the ballpark, but I kind of start like you start. I, I back that way out because I don't want the gun overworking its stuff. Okay. I don't need all those opposing yeah, forces Bobby, in there okay. trying to like right, battle guys, each other out because that's what gives you the freaky the harmonics and stuff. Exactly. exactly. Even in even in machinery, what, what I work around, it's no, or a car. Uh, cars have that smooth point that where, where it's just oh it's gliding and then you speed up 20 miles an hour and it yeah. shakes all over yeah. um it a lot of it is the same and i think a lot of it has has to do with performance on these but uh, a lot of the guns that come to me or people ask for help it's always almost always the rig is is uh way too low and their hammer is way too high and they're frustrated um and a, a lot of people that have oh my extreme spread is uh, or standard deviation is seven, eight, ten, and it jumps all over the place. Sometimes uh, a couple of bar on the regulator, and they're like, "What did you do?" I'm like, you, you just you're poofing. You're poofing. You're and not, you're and not you stay, and you stabilized it. it very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually stable is a, a little a little bit up, and you know, uh, back back off that hammer spring. A ton, especially with these the new uh, adjustments and wheels. Uh, to your point, what you just said, if you're going to retune a gun, if somebody brings me a gun and says, "Hey, I really want it totally retuned," I back everything down. Mm -hmm. Go all the way to the bottom and love work it. your work your way up. I love so it. I'll turn the rig to about 90 to 100. Yeah. I'll turn the hammer way down, shoot across the chronograph 600, yep. and you start to work up. I'll turn up the regulator until the velocity comes down yeah. and then I go to the to the to the hammer mm -hmm. bring it back up and start over again um, until I get up to my desired velocity uh, whatever that whatever that is or whatever they want um, and I usually will turn that rig up until it it, it, it flattens out or comes down so you know it's it's so cool you're the first guy that I've talked to that tunes how I tune like whether it's an Air Venturi Avenger an FX Maverick an Impact a Dreamline a Red Wolf you know whatever it is that I'm doing a tuning guide I do it exactly like you do I back everything way off I always back I like the almost the same numbers as you I like to start with that rag around 90 and back the hammer spring way off and, and they'll ask, like, where do I set the reg? Where do I set the hammer spring? And that just kind of lets me know that, you know, we've confused the audience. They don't understand that blanketing philosophy of you back them way off and you work them up together because these are two forces that are opposing one another. And you want to start easy right. and work them up until you kind of find that sweet spot. And like Jason was saying, you can use that, once you find that sweet spot, you can use that regulator as a little bit of a stabilizing force to get away from the cough or poof and kind of right. like lock, lock in your tune, make things right. a little bit snappy you know, by a, adding another five, ten bars. A simple example of that would be some of your older school guns like a, a Royale or an older Wildcat that mm -hmm. didn't have the externally adjustable regulator. Mm -hmm. They came with a set regulator. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting how you could turn the hammer spring down on those with a set regulator? Yep. They get quiet and sometimes perform yeah, very they, well. They get better. Some people call that valve lock. Valve lock can be really consistent, mm -hmm. really snappy, mm -hmm. and perform very well so uh, that's that that's a, a concept and you know uh, you, when I started watching your videos three years ago you, everything you were talking about made sense from my paintball experience Ted, Ted maybe beer. that's why we tune this yeah yeah <laughs> you, you know, were Ted, watching too much of me <laughs> Ted beer uh, you know everybody he's the kind of the the, the father of tuning yeah. and some of this stuff and he was he would go through this stuff and I would say yes Ted I, that makes sense to me mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're on the same page and I don't I I'll, I'll bet I don't want to speak for Ted I bet he has never had a low pressure gun no he runs not. everything pretty high yeah probably 120 130 I'm guessing yeah on yeah. eggs. It, that's another kind of like um, I always look like when I'm trying to learn I always look for pattern you know talking to different people about how they tune their guns and and Justin Welch Justin Jacobson Ken Hicks you know, a lot of these guys, they like, 
they talk about running the regulator a little higher. And you know, that that's all context too. You say high, someone may be thinking 150, 160, 170. No, no, high is 120, 130. Especially, especially if the there's power plant. plenum. Yeah. yeah, you can get away with 80, 90. And the 720 actually even takes another little step okay. under that, under that 120, 130. The line is hot. But, uh, you know, to that point too, on an impact only, that valve adjuster. Uh, another, uh, what I feel is a really uh, uh, mistake that a lot of people make is they turn that in to start their tune. Mm -hmm. That is the last thing I touch. Mm -hmm. So when I am initially- Are you talking about this guy up here? I'm talking about yep. that, yes. Yep. Uh, I bring like that all the way out. Uh, and, and keep in mind, depending on what vintage you have, there's a lot of different size springs in there. For sure. Uh, and if it's a real heavy core spring, some people start with that turned in all the way on two. If you look at that spring, you have preload the minute you engage it. Yeah. So it's opposing it way past the fourth line. Uh, and, and so that can make it difficult on a lot of people. I've gotten a lot of guns that were tuned very well mm -hmm. and it, the, the valve can't open because the spring's too, being compressed, well, they're well, hitting let, it so let, hard. Let's talk about that a little in case they don't know because okay. we might have some people that are new to, to an impact. And I want to back up a little because we're throwing a lot at these guys. So everything on here is externally just adjustable. The regulator pressure is externally adjustable. The hammer spring attention is externally adjustable. And then the rebound valve, what we're talking about up here is externally adjustable. Car guys, motocross guys, this is kind of like adjusting your rebound on a shock absorber. So the first thing you're gonna adjust is get your regulator pressure kind of in a good starting place. Then you go to your dial over here, which is your external hammer spring. Once you've got that all in a good place, you fine tune or finish up with this little guy out here, which is what Jason's talking about. That's your, re that's your rebound, so you wanna back that way out. And that's more of like an efficiency game, kind of like end game, last step. Slowly work that into maybe close an ES or close an SD, or if you've got a little bit of wandering accuracy, or you've got wasted air. You know, all those things that kind of right. brings all that together with that last right. little. I don't think a lot of people know if you, once your regulator gets up, you know, 100, 110, there's a lot of friction there. Yeah. Um, the, you can run these without a front spring. They will close on their own because you have your 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 regulated air trying to close it for you, uh, and they will run quite well without any spring at all. Mm -hmm. So that opposing force is just to time that valve close. Yeah. That spring is here. Your hammer is opening your valve this way, mm -hmm. and you're opposing that. So uh, it's literally a bump stop. There's actually a little rubber ball in there. When yeah. that hammer's coming the other way. You can make it so it smacks that ball, so it just kind of comes up and barely touches it. Maybe it doesn't get all the way to it. Maybe that ball's putting a little pressure on that. So that's on that's on the MK2 and the MK1. The the power plenums and the M3s have a very heavy spring. Okay, there. so that's changed the ball since is I gone. played with one. The ball the ball is gone, right. and it actually has a spring like a Royale or okay. a, a, a Day State or a Brocock or any of so that. So it's still a spring. It's just not a rubber ball spring. It's actually a heavy. Exactly spring. the original one. Uh, which this one actually has the rubber ball okay <laughs> uh, but it's a hybrid uh, the all of the new ones uh, power plenum and M m3 have a, a spring that is very standard to most of the air guns and you're actually adjusting that spring tension instead of just a hard stop but uh, I do prefer the, the, the hard stop just for the way I tune and, and uh, feel. Mm -hmm. And the spring is still internal. Uh, the new ones are external. So the MK1s and 2s mm -hmm. actually have a spring inside that was not adjustable, it was set. And then the, you use the rubber ball to stop it on this. Uh -huh. So I know that's probably really confusing. No. But yeah, no. all of your new ones in the last in the last two years, they have a spring here instead of a. Uh, it was a uh, rubber uh, neoprene ball that the valve would actually hit, and you could you could stop that valve earlier or later uh, and quiet it down. Well, let's unconfuse them because that was a lot. That was. Yep. All that really matters, guys, is this is your final tuning piece. Perfect. Up here, back it all the way out. So all this other stuff, feel, feel free, that can work and move. Get your tune nine tenths of the way there, and then you can kind of fine tune with that rebound. Is that the right, way to do right. it? Right, yeah, that's an excellent way to do it. Um, 
do not start a tune with your hammer adjustment grub screw uh, turned all the way in. Yeah, now back them out, back everything back, out. Back everything out. You, if you're gonna tune these right, expect to shoot a few pellets. Uh, you wanna save some pellets after you fill them with air about five or six dry shots mm -hmm. if you're going to chronograph yeah you're just going to waste them um, because after you feel air or adjust your regulator clear five or six shots get before everything you settled get your out pellets in there, in there. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll save you a lot of pellets when you're when you're when you're trying to, to tune and learn these um, and that's where i think the future of this sport is is if we can teach everybody to be as self-sufficient as possible mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's going to continue to grow. A lot of people are afraid of this technology. And yeah. It's really not that but hard. You don't have to be. You really don't. Um, so let's have a learning mode. Okay. Jason's such a knowledgeable guy. I'd love to get his angle on this. But let's talk velocity. Versus, okay. Because I know you did well with slugs too. And maybe we can I touch did. on that too. But with the, with the Diablo shaped pellet, 30 cal, 25 cal, whatever, you can whatever, shed light wherever you feel like you, know, you can contribute. Okay. But... I'm always, everyone wants to push these pellets so fast. You know, they want 1,000 feet per second, they want 950, they want 980, they want 970. Not saying you can't have success there, but I would love your, a guy who's had success, who's been in the money multiple times, you know, how do you, what do you have to share on? So, uh, I'm very, very opinionated there, and I've seen uh, a lot of different, a lot of different results. Uh, me personally, a lot of it, uh, let's start with, you need to know what liner you have and what speed it likes. The the one in 37 or slower, so let's say one in 37 to one in 40, uh, they, from my experience, uh, they can shoot phenomenal with calm conditions up to 920, 930. You get out here in the wind, and I hear it all the time. My pellets are spiraling, uh -huh. and I kind of giggle and go, uh -huh. "You're you're over. You're probably over 910 yeah. uh, or 900." Mm -hmm. The 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 stable place that I've seen a lot of, and I I shoot with a, a lot of great great shooters. Uh, it's probably somewhere between 860 and 900. With a one in 37 twist, or a one in 40, or slower. Anything slower. So, some of the guys that are faster. Um, do do well. I uh, with the faster rates of twist, even with the higher speed, they shoot great. But if you're gonna if you're gonna even be competitive in an event like this, um, in calm conditions, you really should be shooting way under MOA. So a lot of these guns out here, I'm quite sure will shoot half inch, <laughs> ten shots in perfect conditions. Mm -hmm. So to really gauge your gun, mm -hmm. you have to find perfect conditions. Because if you try to work a tune in this stuff, uh -huh. you're going to be really frustrated because you're not going to shoot groups. So let me see if I, if I, I don't want to mess this up, but let me make sure I follow in what you're saying. So in the wind, you do better with a slower moving pellet with a slower twist rate. In, when, in the wind, in calmer conditions, you can get away with a faster moving pellet that's spiraling more. However, that's more susceptible to getting really knocked out of balance by the wind. Unstable. Have I recapped that right? Yeah, I, I think you're really, really accurate there. Okay. And, and uh, you know, please everybody understand that, that that's an opinion. Uh, but I've seen it quite a bit, and I think a lot of other people have. I was just going to say, Jason's opinion that he just shared with you guys is a humongous golden nugget. Because I've been hearing that for, for years from the guys and gals that are on the money in these big events. Um, I hear it from the manufacturer. I hear it from pro tuners like Ernest Rowe. You know, you know, a, a lot of these UA guys shooting the FXs. And that, that seems to be kind of the, they're slow in their pellet spiral spiral down, they're slowing the speed down, and that's helping them navigate that pellet in the wind. It's more stable in the wind than a faster a faster spinning, faster yeah. moving yeah. pellet. Although, I found it interesting, FX, uh, you know, when you look at the liners, the one in 37 is now listed yeah. as a, uh, a slower twist, shoots better with pellets especially in the wind uh -huh. and, and i thought that was that was interesting well they've changed their marketing their yeah. marketing like literature 
right. to kind of, they're, they're trying to let you, it's like when. It's very accurate. Yeah, it's like when the race teams try to like slowly just introduce their their knowledge to the general public. You know, you want to pick up on that stuff and like yeah. you guys have. And I'm no different than everybody else. The trend, usually, you get an air gun, they're super cool, they're super accurate. Um, now I want a ton of power mm -hmm. and I want to go fast and most people on their second, third, fourth year, other than slugs, come full circle and come back to a very moderate, yeah. consistent, yeah. accurate. 860, 870, 880. Oh, uh, beautiful, little beautiful slower twist places rate. to be. But I don't want to, you know, this is, we could totally be confusing these guys because if you have a gun that shoots a Lothar Walther match grade, Lothar Walther polygonal, these are barrels that, that, that um, they have a faster twist rate. So, you know, they're going to want a hotter move in 920, 930, 940, maybe even as high as 970, 980 on a pellet. The, the 22 redesigns in the Lothar Walthers are due in 960 to 980 yep. consistently here. And I was just going to say, yesterday, is it Lauren, Lauren Parsons yeah. shooting the Day State Red Wolf? That's a Lothar Walther polygonal. Yep. She was, I mean, she was like second or yeah, third, yeah, third yeah, something crazy like two, that. 239. Yeah, qualifying That's for the only 11 for pellets the out of the 10, you guys. So Yeah, incredible. so, so you know, there's lots of right answers. Yes. We're just trying to give you guys all sorts of different avenues. I'm talking very much follow. to the 30 caliber 44 grain pellet yep. uh, in, in, that, in that mentality. The 22 redesigns and a lot of people are shooting those great. They, they inherently definitely uh, break that mold a little bit, especially with, uh, uh, with the, the, the Day State barrels and, and the FX. I think uh, Nikolai is, is cooking along. Oh, good. Nikolai got first yesterday in the 75 qualifying. With a, with a 22 caliber uh, okay. 700 millimeter. With the, uh, that's, that's who we were making fun of earlier, with all the shroud pulled off of it. Yeah. He's just shooting a naked, a naked, bare impact, naked, man. bang, no shroud, bang. no moderator. Yeah, yeah, the jam nuts just sticking out the end of the end of the barrel. And he and did that with his Jaeger. Yes, when he won out here. He does a lot of work. He does a lot of testing. I have a great deal of respect for him. Me too. He does the work. Mm -hmm. He knows his guns. Well, yeah. so do you want to touch on slugs because this is getting really popular? Yes. Slug is not a pallet. Yeah, so I, I can I can tell you that uh, I'm still in learning mode with slugs. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin Welch, we've talked a lot. Every time I have a meltdown, I call him and mm -hmm. and uh, we have a long conversation and laugh at each other. Uh, Another and, super successful guy out here. Yeah, and nobody should probably shot many more slugs than Justin because he shoots a lot. But uh, I've I've found with slugs that is where. Uh, Speed uh, seems to seems to enhance uh, it. Me personally, from 22 up to 30 caliber, mm -hmm. um, and mostly with uh, the Nick Nielsen slugs mm -hmm. and and the hybrids, I, I can say that the the 940 to 960 range seems to with every different caliber mm -hmm. there is a little bit of a sweet spot there. Yeah, okay. Um, I found, uh, you know, in 177, I found some slower stuff and, and having a lot of fun with that now that there's some slugs for those. But uh, slugs and, and the, the forums are full of it. The, uh, full of great information, let me. <laughs> full of it. Yeah, the forums you're, you're, you're are not full of it. You're full of shit. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, slugs, you definitely want to take your time on your tune and sometimes they'll just dial in. Uh, you know, the difficult part is uh, keeping it there. Sometimes a 20 degree temperature change from Arizona to Utah, yeah, and your tune is out the window, out the window. yeah. Uh, and that you know, it's it changes your speed and it changes your tune to change temperature, altitude, all of that. So, that's where I think, uh, those of you that are interested in the harmonic tuner, mm -hmm. I think that's where we're going to see that take slugs to the another slugs. level. I've been doing a little bit of testing with the help of uh, Austin and Justin uh, with that. And just initially in 25 caliber, and it's pretty amazing how you can, whoa, that, look at that. It's very uh, specific. It's very specific. Mm -hmm. And two notches are totally different uh, just within one rotation. And I do want to talk about that harmonic barrel tuner here in a sec, but I just wanted to add my experience to Jason's with the slugs. That way you guys have it all, all in one little video. But I, um, I've been, you tell your guns, you guys, these guys just picked up the H&N Sport line of pellets. And I've had luck with their slugs at a Lothar Walther's at 750 and 800 feet per second, like tack driving yes. at 50 yards. But then 
you grab a Nick Nielsen 177 and you put it in a Daystate Red Wolf, and that thing wants uh, 1,100 feet per second and it's sub one inch at 100 yards, you know? So that's kind of the window. The hybrids you mentioned, I, I found the hybrids are, are much more specific. They want, because the, they have the hollow right. inside and all the weights on the outside of that hybrid right. slug. They want like a window, like a 20 or 30 foot per second window. Yeah. And then they'll just start clicking, whether it's 940, 950. Yeah. And then the NSAs could be anywhere between 750 and 1200. Right. It's right. just, it's all over the place. It just yeah, depends the on- The most accurate slugs I've ever shot uh, that I've measured are with the 30 caliber hybrid uh, going about 950. Justin had, uh, was nice enough to let me do some testing when they first came out uh, uh, last, last fall. And then the 177 knockouts in the 13 grains. Oh, I'm yeah. telling you guys, those are insane. My crown at like 830 will shoot sub MOA with I'm, those at 100. I'm still waiting for my first success with the knockouts. They're, but but, it, they're, but, they're, I, they're but cool. it'll, it'll come, I'm sure, for But me. slugs, uh, be be prepared to do, do the work. You know, for hunting, a lot of people are great with, uh, you know, inch and a half uh, at 100. Mm -hmm. uh, and I agree with them. And it's pretty easy to get there. Uh, if you're if you're gonna do a little a little bit of work, if you're really gonna dial them in and shoot precision, buy 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 a few slugs and uh, you know get the time and sit down and, and record your data. Mm -hmm. I have a horrible problem with recording data and uh, being repetitive with mistakes. So write your stuff down uh, at the end of the day and what what you thought worked good uh, and what you didn't. And then just keep in mind even with slugs. The wind does a lot to your pellet or your slug. Mm -hmm. Do not let that confuse you. I, I've had days where With I think accuracy. my gun is broken because mm -hmm. the wind isn't blowing and it's just the thermals coming up and down and yeah. dancing you all over the place. Uh, you got to have the right conditions if you're really going right, to test or be indoors. Absolutely. So do you want to you wanna give them kind of a reader's so digest version on the left. of the oh, harmonic barrel tuner like, kind of like you were doing? And when then we'll, yeah, we'll kind of close it out. Um, I'd love to hear your holes. Utah Air Gun story because I want to encourage these guys to, you know, approach, you know, not to be afraid to. If you have, if you got right. mad when skills your and you're sure passionate you about this, don't be afraid sure to approach companies like this. But I'll let you tell your story. Okay. Okay. The harmonic barrel tuner. So, want to kind of so, just tell them what yeah, it is. Yeah. The little bit of experience I've I've had with it, uh, Justin. Down on the left. We're going to call a cord line, please. Hello. No. We're good. Okay, uh, we're so I, I have a little bit of experience with it. Again, in 25 Ooh. caliber on an impact. Hey guys, down on the left. Hello. We're on the right. We're good. Okay. Okay. They've inspected our gun. They okay. know we're up. And uh, make sure so if there's what, what I what I did uh, that, that was that was really and exciting. Sure all the I, I open and uh, threaded it all the way in, which I'm considering a starting point. Mm -hmm. uh, I started at 50 Everybody yards. Clear on the left. And just every time uh, I started right. with quarter turn increments mm -hmm. with uh, five shot groups and just worked through it. Immediately, about in the first half a turn. You know, at 50 yards, they pretty much need to go almost in the same hole, say quarter inch. Mm -hmm. uh, we know with a great rest indoors. Uh, and I went through the whole entire thing, probably uh, 500 slugs. And there was that one spot. I and I could, just liked it. I could come back to it. The group should shrink. I would go away from it. They would open up. They, it never got so bad. But you can uh, see the difference at the same speed. Mm -hmm. I wasn't messing with the tune, and that was at about nine nine sixty uh, with the thirty four point nine Nielsen. Uh, I, I kept coming back to that spot, thinking there's no way this is the only spot on here that will do this, and it was. What what it is, guys, is Chris Turk, P.J. Clark. They worked very closely with FX Air Guns to develop this harmonic barrel tuner. Um, it's going to be an accessory option for FX air guns, but they've also got one that they're developing now that you can use on any brand air gun that has one half inch UNF threads up here. And all it is is a weight, a threaded weight that sits, lives up here on this side of the gun. And as you turn it or rotate it, um, you're, you're, it basically moves that weight up and down the barrel or the shroud yep. so that you can kind of dial in the harmonics of the gun. And once first you do your tune, you get, you know, again, eight, nine tenths of the way there, and then you bring it home with that harmonic barrel tuner, and that's kind of what Jason's yeah. sharing with you. And there's, you not, a lot of, there's not one here, in case you're looking for it. Where right. is the damn There's thing? a lot of people <laughs> here with different weights on here that they can they can move, and they're doing the same basic thing, distributing the weight uh, forward and back 
on the end of the barrel to try to find that, that ultimate har harmonic curve. So I guess we, we forgot your scope, so we should touch on the scope. And then I don't want to keep you. I know you're about to qualify your second round. Up right, here. right, right. I don't want you to miss that. Yeah, you so we'll talk about the, the scope real quick and, and then, then I'll story. quickly the, the Utah yeah. air gun story. Yeah. So uh, I uh, converted to the, the Delta Striker. Uh, it's the 5 to 30. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, what a lot of people would call a busy reticle, uh, which I like. I don't like to turn the turrets very much during this event. So as the pellets drift, uh, you know, I like to just use uh, dashes and marks for reference points, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 that works for me. A great optic. Uh, I don't I don't know a ton about them uh, as far as experience in the past, mm -hmm. but I do have I have the javelin and the striker, and I'm very impressed. Uh, very similar to the Athlon Cronus. Okay. Uh, with a reticle that is a little more to my preference. A lot of people, uh, again, very personal when it comes to, to reticles, but uh, that's great, great optic. Your mounts, I'm seeing them on a lot of guns. This is pattern. I'm seeing it out here. You the Eagle Vision. About, about your mounts, yeah. Yeah, I really like those, especially with with uh, with slugs, because you can get you can get an awful lot of uh, range. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all starting to shoot three and four hundred yards with slugs, uh, and that gives you the ability to do that. So is that why you have the kind of the MOA kind of adjusted into there? Right, right, right. Well, and you can uh, you can optically center your scope. Uh, obviously, this one pretty much lives at at a hundred yards. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can you can center your turrets and keep every everything uh, optically centered, which I think is is more uh, you know from what I understand you know the durability side, mm -hmm. uh, the clarity is really really good. I I think this has a hundred a uh, hundred MOA. This is a mil, so 30, 30 mil of, of range, which is really nice. Uh, I shoot the javelin on my slug gun, and, and you know I can I can dial out to four hundred yards pretty easy. Awesome. So great, great, great scopes. All right, everybody's back. The line. So um, the Utah Air Yeah, you got an interesting story. So uh, yeah, I'll I'll make it I'll make it quick and and uh, and hopefully get a lot into it. So. Uh, I bought a uh, I bought a gun a crown from from Utah Air Guns. Uh, called down there and I heard there was this competition called RMAC and they said yeah come down. So I was at the first RMAC in the sportsman's class. I didn't know anybody mm -hmm. uh, and you know quickly uh, came to find out that the air gun community is incredible, like nothing else I've ever been a part of. Mm -hmm. And uh, great people. Uh, did fairly well. Uh, I met, that was my first interaction with uh, Matt Dover, mm -hmm. and I told him how great the 22 redesigns were shooting out of my crown at 75 because mm -hmm. I qualified. Mm -hmm. I took last place in the 100 because they did not stabilize at that speed after 75 yards. Mm -hmm. Learned that the hard way, and he told me not to, and I said, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, and he does. He, he did, he does. <laughs> um, he knows but, stuff. Got done with that. I came back the next year a little more prepared. Uh, I think I, you know, I can't remember, but I think I, I placed in in everything in the sportsman's class that year. And <laughs> Justin and Austin said, "Hey, yeah, I'll bet wanna, you they did. <laughs> we want to we want to get a team together." And they got uh, you know myself and Shane Royce and David Stevenson, Monty Schulstead, uh, Todd Blanchard, and said, "Hey." Uh, you know, you guys, you guys ought to start wearing our jersey and come, come shoot EBR. And we came down here in 2019, and I think, I think four of us were in the top ten, uh, and we've been part of their, their family and their team ever since. And, you know, it, it, everybody knows they're a great bunch. Yeah, absolutely. So, Without a doubt. Uh, yeah, and and then. So, you, so basically, long story short, you had success. They took notice. They said, "Hey, man, you want to wear the black and gold?" And you were like, "Hell yeah!" yeah. And, and that's just the message I wanted to relay to them. Just come out here and do well and, and be open and don't be afraid to approach these companies or they approach you. And yeah, if you do the work, um, 
and you, you have you have an aspiration to shoot, uh, you can be very competitive in, in this. I mean, everybody can have their day in this in this sport. So yeah, don't be afraid of it. If you like to shoot, you want a lot of trigger time. Air guns are where it's at. That's it. 100%. I have 25, 22 long rifles at home that haven't been shot for four years. So collecting dust. We bought. We, we talked. We talked about that in some of the other inter interviews, and it's like a lot of us are powder burner guys. All these air gunners, oh, yeah. all powder burner guys too, and. It's just a very, it's another interesting avenue to take with, with your passion. Yeah. I got yeah. into air guns because uh, a gentleman approached me and had a pigeon problem. And that's, that's, that's how it went. Pigeon problems are always fun to cure. And the pigeon problem's <laughs> gone. <laughs> you fixed it. Mission well, Jason, accomplished. I'm looking at your watch. I think you're, you're on the line in about 30 minutes. Yeah, I thought you were going to say, well, you tell well, you're very, a watch. you're very color coordinated with all the UA guard. It's very dapper. But um, I'll let you go get set up. Dude, you've been incredibly generous with your time, time and your Steve. knowledge. I'm sure they're at home just loving it. So. You better not be the angel of death, man. No. <laughs> you, your superstition is Huey. <laughs> no. He's afraid that if I interviewed him before the match, it would, it would muck him Give all up. Give me some bad mojo, because yeah, I, need, I need some good mojo. Here we go. <laughs> There's your good mojo. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks, pal. Welcome to the Speed Silhouette Finals for the Professional Division. Let's give a round to all these shooters. Round of applause. They have shot great to get to this point. They are the 10 best out of all of the professionals that came out to this event. So, great job shooting thus far, everybody. And best of luck to you. A reminder, this one is going to calculate all of the finishes, all of the places. Everything will be calculated on this relay right here. Just don't get in Steve's brain. Yeah. You're real close. It looks like, okay, we need another 13, 18. Hey, piggy, piggy, piggy. Look at you. Stop throwing food, Michael. <laughs> there. They look different than our pigs in Florida. It's a what a what a? They could run if I honked. getting pissed.
Oh, it's going, it's going for it. It's going for it. It's going for it. Is it a shrimp? Filet mignon, dude. Oh, throw it some pork. <laughs> Here, give me some more food. Give me some food. Right, right throw it, throw it. Hey, piggy pig. <laughs> hey. So where were you? Can we throw more food? He's good, he's leaving. I like this food. Adele has just been showing and schooling me on how to shoot bench rest here. I think she's in the running for the finals. This gal is 12 years old and she's showing us how to do it. I think that's amazing. Out here with her grandparents in competition. She's only been doing it for a year. Right there. How about that? She beat me yesterday about one shot. Wow. Hey, we're I want everybody to know, Jared, if you'll hear this minor rule change, once you're done shooting, okay, we don't want anybody looking or moving their gun to another target on the range. If you want to look at another target, you're welcome to get up and use the spotting scopes provided by Cytron. But you will not move your gun in either direction to another target when you're done shooting. You will only have it on yours. If you do, you will be subject to a disqualification if you move your gun off your target. Okay, we had a lot of that yesterday and we're gonna eliminate that. Keep your gun on your target even when you're done and use a Cytron spotting scope if you'd like to look at the other targets. Again, we'll also give you an opportunity to go up and photograph it at the end if you'd like, so don't worry. <laughs> oh yeah, you saw it. Oh, hi, <laughs> that little that little Kia right there was not good. Oh God! It felt like somebody barfed in that one. As an expansion chamber, mm -hmm. and then put the ports through the center port and into the felt to be a degassing system. Okay, cool. So yeah, those things are unbelievably quiet for yeah. how yeah. powerful they are. Yeah. Yeah. And I uh, designed the prototype arrow gun that about three years ago I designed it. We're finally putting it into use. Really? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. It's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. What foot pounds are you getting? We're over. We're shooting upwards of 400 feet per second, and we're doing really. <laughs> That's awesome. I already took a 400 pound hog. An old man took a mule deer with it, and it's it. The new arrow gun, if we actually put it into production, uh -huh. it's... You need to. Oh my god. People love it. Yeah, it's it's so great, yeah. man. 395 yards, you get two shots at that target, two shots only, Mr. John Bacacus. <laughs> and Van's question, does he get two patches? No, he only gets one. And I shouldn't give it to him because he beat me with my own gun. Oh, I hate that. Twice.
get one drop here off. Get in on 40. I can't remember if my zero is at 75 or 100. So I went to the string in between, like right in between my thing, and I whacked the string. The first shot, I saw the whole string jump. I was like, I think it's zero. Uh, okay guys, this is going to be a good one. Some of you already know John Bagakis. You've seen some of my videos from prior years, but I wanted to get you guys in front of him because he's another one of these dudes that always has a presence out here at the Pyramid Air Cup, at the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge, and here at Extreme bench rest. Just right. thinking back over the years, yeah. I remember you taking a fourth at Pyramid Air Cup. I remember a couple years back, you took a, a, a second place in 100-yard sportsman out here. Yeah. And a speed challenge at RMAC. I remember you always kind of had a commanding presence there, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, and, and John's always shooting a day state. And some of these guys, you know, they kind of been following me for a long time. Right, right. And they know it's a brand I'm passionate about. Yeah. And I had so much fun when I had my Red Wolf tuning for you guys. I wanted to dive into tuning with John. Maybe him and I can compare notes, and at the end of the day, you all come away learning something. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, did I miss anything kind of on introducing you to get yeah, these guys to prick their ears? Yeah, that yeah. I'm a former powder burner. I'm, I've, you know, last three, four years, making a presence in the air gun world. More about, I like the speed, but I'm working on getting the 100 yard, a little more dialed in. I've qualified at everyone, but I need to finish better in the finals is my next priority. What's so impressive about, to me about you, is you're like always, he's always, he's like a nine-tenths guy. He's like, he has that steady eddy nine-tenths of the way there. I remember you going head-to-head -head with Matt Dubber and, and, um, he's good. and, and all sorts of, yeah. all sorts of other guys, yeah. you know, over, over the years. And, yeah. Well, maybe if they're new to Day State, and uh, let's give them kind of a foundation. Sure. And then maybe you can take them, maybe I'll give them the foundation you can take them through your gun, sure. kind of just an end-to-end -end so that they know what they're looking at, right. and then we'll just start talking tuning. Sounds good. Okay, so if you guys are just getting into this, the Day State Red Wolf, the Day State Safari, the Day State Delta Wolf, these are all electronic guns. They've been around for 15, 20 years. Um, they're waterproof. Day State has videos where you got guys popping out of ponds and stuff <laughs> and submerging these things in aquariums, and, and they're still shooting uh, just fine. But what's so interesting about him is the, the most profound thing that I took away after having spent about three weeks with making two videos for these guys yeah. was the tuning was so easy. You know, yeah. this has a, what's called a GCU inside, a gun, a, a gun control oh, yeah. unit, which is yeah. basically its brain. Yeah. You've got a handheld programmer and you're controlling voltage and you're controlling pulse width to, to tell the tell it what you want to do with velocity and the computer does the rest right. and it just makes it so easy got an electronic cocking arm electronic trigger so there's all sorts of cool things going on here but right. and we'll get all into that but maybe let's switch places sure and you can kind of take them end to end right so that they know what they're looking at here and, right. and then we'll dive into it okay this is my day state 22 high power red wolf i bought it actually before i became a day state member i was a dealer for air guns of arizona and I was able to purchase it at dealer price, and that's when they were just starting the team. And so this is a original, I purchased gun, it's nothing special, the original barrel. Um, but I think they were already starting to work on their ARC program, their better barrels and all that, so this may be in that era. Um, but what are they using for a barrel? It's a Lothar Walther polygonal rifling, or polygonal. Polygonal barrel. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nice and rigid, good. You know, high quality seems to shoot pellets and slugs well. The polygonals do yeah. like the slugs. Yeah, so it, it's done very well. But starting at this end, we got a little zero dB moderator. Mm -hmm. Works well, nice and quiet, not too long, not too big and heavy. Got the ports in it so I can get that lab radar to read my my crack of the shot so oh, it'll, sure. it'll trigger it. So that mm -hmm. works. I like that. So zero dB, do you run that? For noise, or do you run it because you find it contributes to the ac to your accuracy? Uh, I both. Well, mostly noise for me. It's cut cut down on the noise, but uh, after your RMAC video, that kind of got me going on getting more in depth with tuning guns. So we all had, learned something in that. Yeah, video. you know, like the tuners, the harmonic tuners. Mm -hmm. So I had been thinking not so much on harmonic tuning, but I was trying to think about tensioning a barrel. And after watching the, the harmonic tuning thing, I'm like, all right, I need to get off my butt, get on the lathe, make the parts, and, and try it. Mm -hmm. And then my first attempt it didn't seem to like it, but 
Oh, also, Can I brag on you for a second? Yeah, sure. So John's an inventor, to, inventor too. If you guys caught the Armac video, if you've caught uh, EBR videos in, in years past, this like super slick, fast cocking arm over here, by the way, remember all electronic, there's no weight, there's no hammer spring you're compressing. That's the cocking stroke. And you've seen these on other people's guns, like Tom Adams. Yeah. This is the guy that invented this, so. Yeah. But sorry, okay, so yeah. harmonic barrel tuner. Yeah, so the harmonic barrel tuners, I've seen the FX one, I'm like, that's slick, and they're gonna offer one that you can screw on to any gun. Well, the Team Day State guys, uh, the Pitbull air guns, he's got a super trick 3D printer, and he printed these up for the day state team. I think he's gonna be offering them. He's unfortunately, his vehicle was broken on the way here. Oh. He was gonna have some for sale and guns and everything got stolen. But super cool 3D printed, add your pellets for a little bit of weight. You're just moving the tuner up and down the barrel to, to, to play with your tune. And I, I goofed around with it a little bit and I, I saw a noticeable difference. All of a sudden I had a nice group where at 50 yards, they were all one ragged hole. Can but, I give them a little background on that? Yeah, if they don't absolutely. know what that is. So if you caught the last video, the RMAC, where we kind of interviewed the different professional shooters, so something that's just taken our industry by storm, PJ, uh, PJ Clark and Chris Turek, those guys work closely with FX to come up with what's called a harmonic barrel tuner. And it's so good to see these other brands and guys embracing this technology now, because it's going to take our sport to the next level. And what they're finding out is basically by adding a weight up here, and having that kind of be on a threaded collar of sorts to where you can move that weight up and down the barrel, they're finding they can control the frequency of that shot cycle as that, that pulse wave kind of goes through your barrel, through your gun and barrel, and you're seeing 100 yard groups shrink from an inch down to like sub half inch stuff. Like it's crazy just tuning that. Yeah, and we'll get into that more, but that's kind of what John's talking about. Yeah, with so, this harmonic and then the, the firearms industry kind of already had a lot of this, but. The air gun guys, these barrels don't heat up. They stay pretty consistent. So it's like, wow, great idea. Why didn't we try this sooner? Or maybe some guys have. Yeah. To me, I, I, this is a quick, easy deal. PRS and, that came out of, right? Yeah, I think precision so. Precision shooting, or yeah, precision rifle shooting. Browning, I think, even offered it on an early rifle years, years ago. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's come a long ways. And the thing I like about the ones that are numbered and marked we have three programs available to us. And, uh, you want to tell them a little bit about that? Yeah, so this gun has three programs where I open the bolt, hold the trigger down, and I can change from high power to medium power to low power. And, you know, the guns come tuned already. If you get in there and custom tune it, you can tighten up those, make them close. So if you're having some wind issues like Justin Welsh at Pyramid Air, he noticed his pellets were spiraling with the impact, you just back down the hammer spring, slowed the pellet down, and all of a sudden you got the group. You won the match. Yep, everybody wants eight, everyone wants fast, 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 but I think he, he pulled the reins on that down to 850, 860 yeah. feet per yeah. second, and 100 yards just started just going bloop in the wind. Yeah, and that's it. You know, you need consistency. You know, it'd be nice for the pellet to get there in a microsecond, but if it's getting there slower, but it's doing it consistent, that's how. That's all that matters. That's how you win matches. Yeah, that's you right. Know? So, you know, so I'm, I've just started playing with the barrel tuner. Mm -hmm. I'm somewhat new to the tuning of the guns. I've had a tuner for a long time. Okay. I watched your videos and I got in, and initially I was pretty intimidated by it. Uh, a friend of mine, Dave Porter, um, Team Day State, he was dealing with a gentleman, Mark, in the UK that was, a, I think, close to Day State, mm -hmm. or used to work for him or something along those lines. And he put up a whole tuning section on uh, the Aragon Nation for him. Yeah. On how he does it. And it was, it, that, clicked with me. It wasn't intimidating. It was simple. Yep. He's put a regulator on the gun to keep it consistent, like mm. you're tethered. Yep. And he's programming per the pulse width, which is like you're, if you're a car guy, like a fuel injector. How long it, it fires that solenoid. It's like a duration. Yeah. It's a control of duration. You, you smack that hammer mm -hmm. against the valve or the spring or whatever. Um, so you can play with that. You can tune it. Well, I wanted to have the option of, okay, the 22 redesigns, that's what I'm shooting in this thing, seem to like 970. But I, maybe I'll put a program in at 950 and a, and a 940 in case I need to slow it down. Mm -hmm. Or I'm kind of in the middle now. So my I set 970 as my middle setting. I'm pushing closer to 1,000 on the high setting, but that allows me to play with slugs. So I'm actually running the gun on medium, and I have one option to go slower or one option to go faster, which with the pellets probably wouldn't be very good but I haven't really messed with it yet. All right, so if, they, if they're new and they just picked one of these up, 
It comes with a low, medium, and high setting right. that you get to choose. Yeah. Basically, you, you talk to the computer yep. by basically opening the cocking arm, pulling the trigger, and there's a little display over here that'll read low, medium, and high power. It'll give you shot count, if I remember. There's a light on there. Right. Um, there's not shot count, but um, like where you are in the magazine. Yeah. That, yeah. what else does it do? I kind of forget, counter, it's been two years for the me. The timeout on the gun. Yeah. And, and mine's an older gun. This hasn't even been reprogrammed yet. So the light, one of my most irritating things about this me electric too. gun I, I spoke is about it that turns the... off on me. And I had it happen at some of the matches where in a speed event, I go to a dead trigger yep. because the gun had shut off. Yep. So after this match, it goes I'm into like, sleep mode or yeah. standby. And I, you know, and that's one issue with having batteries tied to things that I'm not a huge fan of. But these guns, that's why I have an amazing light, super light side handle and a great trigger is because it's electric gun. So I'll put up with that. How long, how much, how many pellets or days or hours, you know, do you get out of a battery? Would you say? Um, I think you probably could get. I usually will recharge it during a match like this because mm -hmm. uh, I think Tom even mentioned it on um, speed stuff. So when this gun first came out, this gun had the G1 bore, which was the original. And, and when I came up with a side lever, I was beating the gun where I'd get onto a trigger and it was mm -hmm. dead. The capacitors hadn't recharged fast enough mm -hmm. and the battery was a little smaller at that time. Mm -hmm. Then they developed the G2 board and I couldn't beat it. Now, yeah, if I, I get a I, weak I, battery, I can beat it. But a fresh battery in the gun, I can I can't beat the, the side action. I've been asking that question kind of around, and and I only have my experiences when I had it to do my my research with it. I was getting like even all the heavy duty tuning that weeks. Yeah. So I don't know if that I would was, say five thousand rounds. Yeah, something stretch. ridiculous yeah. like that. Yeah. But I can see, you know, just like any lipo battery, whether it's in your laptop, whether it's in your cell phone. They have a lifespan, and if right. as you use them, you know, Start maybe, the yeah, you need to replace them to right. keep them fresh, but it's something to be mindful of. But something I keep circling back to is that low, medium, and high power. Right. So you get to pick that as right. the owner. So it'll yeah. come with, with some presets where the gun will already perform with pellets and stuff. But if you want to experiment, you can get yourself a handheld programmer, right. and you can go back in there and you can change the low, medium, and high uh, and just pick whatever you want, want for it. You can right. flip flop them, but the, the basic takeaway is that you can enter in a yeah. velocity for yeah. whatever you want. And, and you that's go. the nice thing is if you, I want to shoot redesigns and maybe 50 meter stuff, the 18 grains are better. I could have a setting just for that pellet. Mm -hmm. So redesigns are setting one and, and the lighter pellets setting two. Mm -hmm. So, and or slugs, you know, now we're starting to see more slugs. So. Mm -hmm. Right now, my gun, high power, is going to be my slug setting that I haven't totally experimented with, but it seems to shoot them at about 1,020 or so to 1,080, somewhere in that range, mm -hmm. and it seems to shoot them well. Uh, Do you so, even use the low, or you just use the medium and the high? So far, I've mostly the medium and the high, Okay. Um, but usually I'll set it and I don't mess with it. I leave it, hopefully it's doing the 970, I'll check when I get, you know, the altitude or whatever, verify that it's shooting close to where I what I'm used to, mm -hmm. and then it prints on the target the way it should, and I just go. I, so I know I'm, not, I'm not ever really doing any tuning at a match. Like I, sure, you're I coming prepared. Do, yeah, well, some degree. So, do you want to switch sides with me and keep sure. taking them through sure, your gun, sure, and then, exactly. and then, we're also excited to to share with you guys about tuning and stuff. We, yeah, we keep getting sidetracked with. Yeah, so you know, or I'll, I'll blame myself. Standard I gun. I do have the 580 bottle. I think originally these were coming with the 480. Right. But uh, I want the more, you know, 10% more volume, probably 10% more shots. And it looks good on there. Yeah, and it, it's it's not there. unbalanced, it's not unruly. We did the little uh, pick rail on the bottom of the stock. Mm -hmm. I had used to do, and I did this with my first uh, impact, where I ran a real long cantilever uh, bipod, which makes the gun extremely stable. But one of the things I learned in the speed event is if I had the bipod way out there, I had to move the gun so much to get to these closer targets. Mm. So more inboard for this works well. Mm. Ideally, I think I, uh, for bench rest, I probably still want it out here a little further. I just haven't had time to make a really good jig for that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and do the arca rail because mm. I wanna do some more of that PRS shooting. Sure. So now I'll have that adjustability. So okay. currently this is my, you know, the AccuTac great bipods. Mm -hmm. They do, you know, solid great stuff made in america made in america and i early on i tried the cheap ebay stuff and that's what you're getting is cheap ebay mm -hmm. stuff your guns bouncing moving around 
So and let me just throw add yeah. this to Accutex. These are good people, guys. Yes. I met them. I met the owner Felix and in, in, uh, in Utah three four weeks back, and this is a solid bunch of people that have developed this and manufacture it, and they care very much about the firearms industry and the air gun industry. So. You know, not to sound like an infomercial for those guys, but if you, they're expensive. They're expensive, but you but get what you pay it. for, yeah. and yeah, yeah. and you know, that's support that's, those guys if you can. That's one of the things I learned early on: buying guns. Buy the, save your money and buy the thing that's the right part. Yeah. Buy you're your third buy part it. first. Yeah, exactly. Don't don't keep buying the crap and then get to the good right. stuff later. Mm -hmm. Save your money. Buy buy the quality. Buy the quality to, to start with. So mm -hmm. basic, yeah. You know, Accutac bipod. Yep. The action's pretty much all the same other than the addition of the side lever, charge handle, just the offset bracket I made and I had a couple different settings. Because, Normally there's a drop down right here? Yeah, initially that's all I did was I moved it to here mm -hmm. and I was having a problem with it. It's such a small, I had RMAC. I won the speed event, but I actually had it start unthreading on me and doing it a couple times. I, I short stroked mm -hmm. the gun. Mm -hmm. so. There were some fast shooters there. I got I got away with it, but there was some more room for improvement. And this is actually something Tom had done. This is off the uh, the uh, the newest Day State, the Delta Wolf. Mm -hmm. This is their extended charge handle. Okay. So now it gives me a nice level. You know, mm -hmm. I'm quick onto the gun with it. So that's my charge handle. It works well. I had cut the action on this gun so I can actually run the big side shot magazines in the gun because I'm one of those. I'm not a flag reader. I'll shoot a couple ciders, and if it's landing where in the same spot, I'll start burning targets. I'll shoot five. Sometimes I'll be brave and shoot ten, and live by the sword, die by the sword. I've been bit by it where I'll shoot, you know, five eights or nines, and then a four because I didn't notice the wind change. Should we give them some context on side shot if they don't know? Yeah. So side shot was Van and Thal, Thane and Val. I've <laughs> yeah, got it back. I do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> And those guys are incredible. They're, yeah, they're side shot, scope cam, genius. saber tactical, yep. kind of Donnie FL. You know, mm -hmm. they all work together on kind of the same deal. Yeah. So I get 28 rounds out of a out of a magazine. So you've modified your Red Wolf to yes. run with the side shot magazine. Absolutely. The right, neat everybody. thing about it is call a cold line. I can uh, I can still run the uh, original Day State mags as well. Mm -hmm. And that was like for the speed event in RMAC, mm -hmm. these are much quicker to change and, and they're more, you know, the, the gun was designed for them, so they go in and out of the gun really well. Mm -hmm. This is still a work in progress, I don't have a latch that it lands on, so I got to kind of friction fit it and, okay. and, and line it up. All right. So it's a work in progress. All right. That's, you know, the side lever charge handle. The, you got Everybody, the, the, we're going to go cold. Please discharge your gun. Leave the actions open and in. We'll just talk loud over here. Okay, if you gotcha. have something in there, let it go. Basic stock Make gun. Sure your uh, you, you notice there's a crack in the stock. Yep. These Everybody. are very expensive stocks. Team I haircut, got clear. a hold of the guys at Air, Air Guns right. of Arizona and Day State said, hey, cold, I want to experiment. I'm going to get me a receiver and I'm going to take it out to the mill and I'm going to go to town on it. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to cut a brand new $700 stock. Sure. So they actually had one that had fallen and been broken. So oh, okay. we glued it back together mm -hmm. so I didn't feel bad about cutting into a beautiful laminate stock. And then just to be different, I put the red cheek grease off one of my other guns. Off of the Red Wolf. They come in blue red. and red yep. and a beautiful walnut. Right. And then I, I kind of passed over. So Athlon, this is Athlon Cronus. Um, and that's the other thing. Spend the money on it. Get the good optics. And I've tried hodgepodge and using the scope off this rifle or that get yourself some good optics i was swapping for the speed event i was running a lower powered scope and then i'd go back to the big i had a citron for the 100 yard well bouncing back and forth i don't like doing that this this scope will go down to the lower four and a half i think so for speed events i turned my power down i run eight six power i don't want a super tight field of view. I mm -hmm. want to be able to see the next target I'm going to, or if I'm trying to speed to a stop plate, mm -hmm. I need to see it. Sure. So the nice thing is I can turn the scope down and then I can get back up to that 29 power and still see my shots in 100. At 100. Yards. So good So which scope. Athlon is this one? This is the other Cronus. The Cronus. Which is like one of their highest models. A lot of guys running Athlon out here. Yeah. And I, Athlon's here at the event too. They, they, it's cool. The factory showed up. They're rubbing elbows with people. Yeah, they're taking on the air gun world big time. Yeah, and I, and taking it serious. We're starting to, the optics companies are going, hey, the air gun world is something, it, it's a huge market. Mm -hmm. We need to get in there. And, and this will focus down to 25. So it does pretty good. 
So we're we're making a statement. You know, I'm, I'm from the firearms world, and the oh. air guns have come a long way. What they're finding out, the scope companies, a lot of their powder burner customers, Crossover. they're they're over here playing with the air guns too, and that yeah. whoa. Better get get over there and yeah, support them there That's as well. It. That was part of my deal when I was trying to hit somebody up for stuff. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, I don't just shoot revolver. I don't just shoot three gun. I do this, that, and the other. I'll have your product in okay, front of a everybody. bunch of people. All the shooters so. are back. The line's gonna go hot. So, do you want to touch on this shooting. in the back, and so then this, we'll dive into some yeah, tuning? This is that uh, Croft and Lint, I think it is. Crawford and Lint. Yeah. Yeah. So they sent me this. Two weeks ago, and I tried it out, and uh, it's a prototype. But it's a Red Wolf specific part. It's for yeah, the Red I Wolf and Safari, so. probably. Yeah, so it mm -hmm. fit. I, I just unscrewed the butt stock off of this thing, put it on here. So now you've got the nice adjustable. You can you can't up and down, all that stuff. Kind of like you know what Saber Tactical is doing, and all that. Mm -hmm. That it's another option for the Red Wolf. So I'm giving it a try. So far, I like it. It's cool. Um, and I, I'm giving some feedback on it. So hopefully, I'll bet it you you could just kind of hang that. Yeah, and that's hang it I'm on your shoulder. About. You know, for speed stuff, I may get to the point where I'm running the gun right, you know, left side charge handle mm -hmm. for speed, and maybe not holding the gun as much, and maybe I make a hook that lands on my shoulder. Yeah, I've seen that that's done. what I was thinking. I, I, so, I appreciated that for that. Yeah, so that's in it. That's the majority of my gun right now. That's. So did you say, John, that you had the the original GCU in here? Or you upgraded to the, the, the so the, I had the original second gen that I was out running. Uh, the, the capacitors would not recharge fast enough, okay. and that that kind of led me into having the program. By so outrunning, you mean? I would cycle the bolt and get on a trigger that was dead. There was no gotcha. no action. The I computer just the trigger, couldn't see it. It's too and fast. And then hit it again. The ba the capacitors had recharged and it was ready to fire. Okay. So the new board, I think they upsized the battery, mm -hmm. and they have bigger capacitors, and, and it's obviously probably more memory or everything. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, Dawn at Day State program the gun at EBR to, I don't know, two years ago, three years ago, uh -huh. with the new board, because I had no way of programming it gotcha. and set it up. So he put a generic program in there, and they were all real close. I mean, it was like 980, 970, and 960, they're real tight, mm -hmm. which wasn't bad, but I wasn't getting a real good shot count out of it. And I fought that for a long time because I was Ooh. intimidated by a program. Mm -hmm. So I finally got in there with the help of uh, Mark out of England and my buddy, we did the pulse width program, where we were programming we're searching for speed. I want 970 out of these pellets. I hook up my chronograph, shoot a shot at whatever pulse width, and just up the pulse width till mm. I get to the speed I want, mm. and check that at 175 bar, maybe 200 bar, and 250 bar for the programming portion of mm -hmm. it, and then maybe pick some other speeds, and then I go back and program it, and, and it seems to work very well. So now I'm not intimidated by programming. And I need to work. I want to get the strings a little tighter and just work with the gun and see what it likes. Cool. So you're, there's you're, some room there. You know what's so cool about this is we get to share our tuning, our different tuning stories, our different tuning experiences, basically. So if y'all are new here, I have another YouTube channel where I've done a full tuning guide on this gun. And I'm going to share with you the nuts and bolts of that because I was wor I cheated. I was working directly with Daystate when I was doing my learning, Daystate England. And so what I was teaching you guys in that video was directly from the factory, the actual tuners at the factory that tune each one of these guns as they, yeah, as they go out the door. But just to kind of like paint you a picture of how this works, it's so incredibly easy. And what I love about this technology is it's so easy. <laughs> that was an air gun, by the way. Yep. <laughs> LCS Air Arms, baby. Woo yeah, yes, sir. It's so easy with this technology. Once you find a tune, you record your data, and then when you're playing with other tunes, you can circle right back to that and find it, boom, like that. So that was really, really easy. But the other thing that blew my mind that was so not time-consuming and fun was the method in which you tune. So basically, you hook up this programmer. It's talking to the GCU inside the gun. And with your programmer, you're basically to, uh, adjusting just two things, voltage and the pulse width right. that John was talking about. Now, the voltage is the coarse adjustment, and the pulse width is the fine tuning adjustment. The voltage is how much power that hammer sees when it smacks the valve. So that's a lot like cranking in or out on your hammer spring tensioner sure. on a valve, and then the, the pulse width control is kind of like controlling that duration or how long that valve stays open and closed when it's open. So that would be some of like your fine tuning um, 
uh, adjustments that you see like on the F on some of the FX's yeah, or some of your overturn. regulator fine tuning so you can control all that but what was so cool about it guys is so you go in the gun with your little programmer and it gives you like three volt say you know there's a high medium and low power you pick high power okay and on that high power it gives you a high medium and low think of them as dots across your across your graph a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here on the shot chart. So I don't yep. need to keep punching in the yeah, face, no, you're John. Good, you got it. This is so cool. You set a voltage for this dot, this dot, and this dot, and then the computer basically fills in the blank and gives you that nice flat shot curve at that velocity with a tight ES and a nice tight SD. And that's what was so amazing. Like, I never even went in and fiddled with pulse width. The factory was like, don't even fiddle with pulse width because we got that there really just change your voltage because that's like changing your hammer spring and then the computer will do the rest for you and I was so blown away at how I think I made a whole bunch of shot charts for you guys in that video but I literally went out in my backyard and I grabbed and I was like okay I want a, I want a high power tune so I picked a, a high voltage a high voltage and a high voltage for my high power tune the computer connected those dots and it gave me exactly what I was looking for I went to that mid power I pick like a mid voltage, a mid voltage, a mid voltage, the computer connect those dots. I had a nice flat shot chart run there and so on and so forth. And you're literally writing these numbers down in a pad and there's like infinite voltages that you can play with, which is right. so cool about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And if, 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 if one wasn't to your liking, i.e. you weren't getting the accuracy out of that pellet or slug at that speed, it literally takes you like two minutes to plug it in, put the old voltages back in and go back to where you were and I absolutely just love that technology. It was just fun. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It's neat. It's amazing, and it's it's quick and easy. It's mm -hmm. not like I got to sit there and twist on valves, and punch it in, program. It. Yeah, th slick. there's no balancing act. Right. There's no regulator, hammer spring compression, rebound, transfer port. The computer does all that for you. If you picture like a shot chart in your head. You're picking three points along that shot chart saying, I want you to ride along here, Mr. Computer, with this pellet at this speed, and it just fills in the blanks for you. Absolutely. It's so awesome. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Good stuff. So what um, what all events are you shooting out here, John? I'm doing about everything. Okay. Um, I, I think I signed up for everything. I Which is? Field target. American field target. Shot that yesterday. Yeah. I, for the first time, shot big boar, mm -hmm. and I was fortunate enough, Kip, as his bush buck, him and uh, Pacon were shooting it. That's and a 454 air gun, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, uh, it was no joke. Bang. And uh, I got to use all their dope after this. So I, I got all the all their knowledge, and they just handed me the gun and managed to hit the, the 495 yard target twice. Wow. Which I was amazed. 495 I did, and that, yards. That sank in last night. Bing, like, bing. I hit a target at 495 with an air gun. Mm -hmm. The yeah. funny thing is everybody's, John doesn't know this, but everybody's walking around going, did you know that John hit the 495 target twice? And they were like this far from each other. Yeah. So it was, <laughs> you know, and like I said, I know, I, I was the lucky guy to got to be behind the gun when the wind was right and two other guys did all the work for me. Uh -huh. So I give them full credit, uh -huh. but I did have to pull the trigger. So I'll take some credit. You, as well. sh you should, like I said, you're a presence out here. Yeah. And, so, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so big bar, American field target. Big bar, uh, I just shot the 50 yard uh, bench rest. I'm going to do the speed challenge, the 75 yard, and I don't know. Is there anything and hopefully else? we'll see you in the finals. Hopefully, yeah. So maybe I can keep the string of being in the finals and maybe break the string of not winning the finals. So. If they're new to all this and they're thinking about coming out here to partake in all this, how, do, how does the 75 yard translate to finals? And what is finals? So, yeah, you're going to shoot two 75 yards targets that's your qualifiers those two scores combined are going to determine if you're one of the 20 guys that are going to be in the finals shooting 100 yards so some of the matches are gone away from the 75 and you just start out at 100 mm -hmm. at least with the 75 you kind of get to get settled in a little bit but the scores are typically going to be higher mm -hmm. so you got to still got to do your part um, but you know it's a uh, it's it's a blast. And Big yeah. Boar is what yards out to what yards? I think we were as close as 30 yards out to that long one was 495, 495. which I was amazed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did the PRS, that was the other event, um, and I, that was one of the neat things I just started doing. That was fun. And using the Strylock Pro to do that, because I'd never mm -hmm. been a long range guy, and it's like, man, I click it, 
I just hit 168 yards with a pellet gun, with a pellet, mm -hmm. several times. You know, the wind was my friend at that time. And they had light up targets too. Yeah, it was that. cool. That's pretty I mean, cool. You know, we're doing 100, you know, 120 and then 168 with a, a 25 grain pellet. Mm -hmm. And I think I got all my hits. It's amazing. So man. it was it was cool. So it's this is a lot of fun. If you come to this event, mm -hmm. it's the same entry fee. Sign up early and shoot everything. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to borrow a gun to do the big bore, but you know they used to do small pistol, small bore pistol too, where they'd lend you a gun to shoot. So you're here. It's that Might kind of well environment. Everybody's helping each yeah, other. Exactly. You, you got know. guys from competing teams helping people yeah. spot. I was on the Justin bench. Wells just walked behind me here. He was a rock star yesterday. He was he was. I mean, he doesn't even work out here, and he's out here like coaching and working and yeah. running spotter, and then. He picks up his gun and in like two minutes, like cleans the course to run his event, and then you know starts working again, helping other guys. It's amazing. He's, he's a hell of a dude. He's I a mean, hell of a dude. He's you know opposing team to me. He's given me all kinds of help, and that's that's the way to be. You know, yeah. I was just shooting the 50 yard, and I had another competitor sitting next to me that was shot for a different company, mm -hmm. but we're competitors. We're friends. We're you know we're having a good time. Yeah. And I'm looking at his target. I'm going. I don't think he shot that target. And he goes, you're right, thank you. you yeah. know, and he was able to shoot yeah. the target and not have a miss. So takeaway, don't be afraid to come out here, guys yeah. and gals. There's ladies shooting out here too, and it's a fun environment. It's not Formula One where right. and NASCAR where, where, where you're running people off the road. I mean, everyone's here to have fun and help. It's competitive because there's big money on the line. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong, but people are here to win. Yeah. But it's just, just the greatest bunch of people that'll yeah. help you out. And, That's and, the thing, is it's the, you know, the shooting environment in, in general. Anybody that's wearing somebody's name on their shirt is here. To, they're representing a company. Yep. And it's kind of our job, if you're wearing somebody's name, to be open, to be friendly, helpful, show your product, mm -hmm. but also share your knowledge. And Justin's a perfect example. Some guys, you know, he's out there. He could he could keep all this stuff to him. I don't want John to catch me or beat me. Me and Tom Adams. I made him oh, a slide man. lever handle, and I, I thought for a while, do I want to hand this guy who practices every day, yeah. who's known for his speed, lightning fast, something to beat me with? Mm -hmm. And fortunately, I got him at, at Armac, but <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's out for blood now. So. If you want to get in Tom Adams' head, guys, yeah. check out the video that I had about a month ago, the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge, where I interviewed him like John and I are doing now. Yeah. and. He kind of taught you all his, his little his little tri tips and yeah, tricks the way John is. And yeah. hey, speaking of just pouring it out, being helpful, mm -hmm. John, thank you so much for sharing absolutely with these guys. Yeah, anytime. And um, unless you want to add anything, man, oh, I think, I'm gonna say goodbye and get I some think, water. Yeah, I think I think we covered it. You the man. Appreciate you, pal. Thank you. And so do they. Right Good on. luck. Yeah, thank you. I don't know how much longer I can hold this position? <laughs> <laughs>